test, test, test. Okay, good, I'm nice. It's still working on the stream. All righty. So we got we got a lot done last time. <laughs> um, so you guys are still in a uh, Sayashto, Sayashto, which is like one major district of Axis, the Eternal City, the Plain of Pure Law. Um, you guys have fought your way through the Emperor's, the First Emperor's Tomb. You ended up in this other plane. You talked to an extra planar detective. Uh, had a few fights with these various weird denizens of this plane that don't seem like Axiomites or Inevitables. Uh, they keep getting their memory wiped by a Hayamuta, uh, some sort of strange aberration that uses uh, like kind of monk powers. Um, but currently, you know that whatever organization and conspiracy is going on here, they are trying to put um, a relatively recent resident um, sorry my rule 20 is like frozen there we go um a relatively recent resident named tesemony who is a, a medusa she is trying to run for office uh particularly the office of the counselor of gates there's a few different counselors in this uh, eternal city but counselor of the gates is a big one um, and I believe you guys are trying to put together a counter campaign to make sure that she does not win. Alright, so here's our little dramatic art from that. Uh, so the debate stage is you guys get ready to take her down in the field of politics. Um, I know one thing you guys uh, wanted to, so basically the way this campaign is going to work is that it is one, two, uh, it is seven phases of persona phases. Um, you have the option of trying to gather new agents here in access, which would be, uh, you'd have to use one of the operations that does that, the recover agents operation. Or if you guys are willing to, you can have uh, some local casters plane shift your agents from the material plane to here at the cost of 100 GP per agent. Or I could just use plane shift because I have plane shift. Yeah. Um, let's see. I think it... Um, okay, it says... Because uh, it's all kind of, you know, it's all kind of abstracted in Persona phases. Like, you know, each phase is like weeks or so. Um, it says if you can do that, uh, the price for you is 10 gold pieces instead. Cool. Uh, 10 gold pieces per retail instead of 100. Log. Are there new uh, special <clears throat> actions for this location? Uh, yes, there will be some special ones. Give me one moment. <laughs> um, just pulling up all our regular ones as well. Ah, I guess there are not um, specific ones compared to like operations that you might normally do. Um, however, uh, they are going to affect in different ways. And something that's going to be a bit different here um, is I'm going to counter you guys with her counter. So she has her own facet points. Uh, I'm not going to say how many, but she has facet points in all the categories. Definitely not as high as any of you, but um, she is going to try and challenge you guys on certain things. All right. So basically, it, it, I, I'm, gonna, I'm just going to go through the whole explanation because it's going to be a bit confusing if I don't. Um, this election is basically an extension of the agent's uh, subsystem that you guys have been using since book two, Songberg, Scion, and Saboteur. Um, the election can last between seven 
or 10 phases, but you guys uh, have already successfully done a lot of clues, so you really only need it to last seven. Um, at the end of the final phase, the citizens of Sayashto are going to cast their votes for either your candidate or her. Over the course of an election, uh, you either earn or lose points for the various facets, um, and the candidate who has the higher point total in at least four of the facets wins the election. So basically, this is going to be a separate facet pool from the ones you normally have. Does that make sense? Mm-hmm. So who, who is your candidate? I believe it was Phineas. Phineas? Okay. So the way it's going to work, Phineas, is essentially you have your regular facets. You can use those amount of agents to do your stuff, right? But in terms of your campaign facets, you're going to start with one facet in each of the categories. Um, basically, your successes or her failures are going to raise or lower your facets in each category. If you can beat her in four out of the six categories, you win the election. Um, if there is a tie, you each get, like, if you each have three of the categories unlocked, uh, we'll go into a, like, sudden death type thing. Sudden death. Yeah. Where you actually kill your opponent. <laughs> you guys actually just fight to the death. Um, alright. You know, if we skip to that part, we might win. So, right? there are <laughs> a few extras that are gonna help. Um, hold on, let me see if this is actually in. Do, 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 do. Might just be able to give you guys this. Nope. Alright, unfortunate. Okay, so I am just going to kind of describe some extra ones to you. Um, you can have your agents poll uh, the local populace. And you can use Charm, Genius, Sagacity, or Subterfuge for that. I'm going to put, like, just the general ideas in our Roll20 chat. Uh, basically, your agents survey the voters to learn how they view the candidates. Um, if you beat the operation check, uh, you get more points in your facet that you're going for. So you could, like, choose, like, oh, I want higher Charm, Genius, Sagacity, or Subterfuge, and go for that. You could also run a smear campaign against your opponents. Uh, that is charm or subterfuge. That's exactly what it sounds like. You try to make them sound awful, highlight their failures and foibles. Uh, and next, you can uh, stump someone. You and your agents make speeches, uh, gla glad hand crowds, and motivate voters by using any facet. Um... You can do a f <laughs> It depends on how much- how much money do you guys have right now? I feel like it's a lot. Because if you have a lot, you can also spend money to try to get more people to come to your different events. I think we got like 48,000. 50,000. Yeah. Okay, so for every uh, 100 gold pieces you spend on operation, you get a bonus to the check. Uh, up to a maximum plus five. All right, that was a lot to take in. This is a little bit different than the regular stuff. Um, is there any other? Is there any questions you guys have before we start going into the actual phases? Can I use my friend in high places to bring some of my agents over since I get seven hundred fifty gold worth of free spellcasting? Hmm, I would say yeah, for sure. Okay. I would say if that's free spellcasting, yeah, you could bring seven agents over because you're getting. Yeah. So seven agents come over for free. Right. So <clears throat> is stumping considered an operation where we would need agents? Or is it just something uh, where we make a little check? Operation. All right. Basically, you're trying to fuck up. Um, not fuck up. You're, you're basically trying to improve one of your facets. Uh, the DC of like your campaign facets. So the DC is going to be like a certain number plus the points you already have in that facet. Uh, and at and least, if you have like exceptional successes, there's a chance you could do even better. Like you might raise your campaign facets by more than that. Okay, so 
if we bring in agents, are those going to add to the role or no? Yes, uh, just like a normal operation. You can send as many agents okay. as you want. Uh, per each phase. Mm. Alright, so Blaze, are you going to mm -hmm. bring in all the agents we need, or...? Yeah. I mean, if it's only 10 gold per... Yeah, I mean, if you have planes, so basically 10 gold... How many agents is each person bringing? And then just multiply that total of agents by 10, and we can get the final price. Um, I'll bring in, um, I think six, because you can only send out as many as you have level, right? As you have in the um, facet. Right. So, six. I'm going to bring over... I'll bring over six as well for myself. And Phineas, how many do you want? Uh, seven from my friend and 13 from you, so I have 20 total. Okay. Hell yeah. and so if it's 13 from me... Uh... That would be 25, so that would be 250 gold. Sven, do you have agents? Do I? Uh, I don't oh. believe... I don't believe I do, no. You didn't start him with any agents, Ben? Um, I think we could start you with... What's everyone's highest rank right now in a facet? Ten. Ten for me, six. Ten. Ten for me. I'm gonna say... You can start, um... At facet seven, uh, in one of the facets. So basically, the way persona phases work. This is gonna, I, this, sorry, this is gonna be a little bit new for you. Yeah. I'm yeah, sorry. Um, it's all good. Basically, um, where there's like regular combat is you know seconds. Then there's social combat where you use like you know try to influence people. That's like mi minutes at a time, ten minutes at a time. Uh, these are persona rounds, persona phases, which are like rounds that take like a week or two to complete. Everyone okay. in the party is good at certain different facets. And this is kind of like the spy master aspect of the game. So either people... Can, and you can choose to be good at multiple facets. So if you want to like split your seven into different things, you can. But I recommend maybe like maxing one out. Uh, the choices are... Here, I'll, I'll write them in roll 20. But it's charm, genius, heroism, sacrifice, sagacity, and subterfuge. <laughs> Um, so if you go into the uh, notes, there's a facets of persona phases. Yes, there is. Right a up at the top. Oh, I see it now. Yes. Um, basically, you know, they all do different things, like charm. A lot of your skill checks to raise that uh, facet. You can make like a lot of like diplomacy and like, bluff stuff like that to raise it. Um, the more agents you have, you can run operations. So basically, every round of persona has two options: raise your facet. Um, which makes you have more agents and more bonuses, or you can conduct an operation, which lets you do stuff. So it could be stuff like, you know, like this, like a smear campaign against an opponent, or like sending your agents to investigate a secret base and like gain intel, all that kind of stuff. Okay. Um, and they might be different depending on what facet you choose. Like someone who chooses, uh, like sacrifice is like a real like man of the people. Maybe you hold like a rally or things like that. But if you're focusing in subterfuge, maybe you send in, like, a bunch of, you know, like, shadow spies to sneak in at night somewhere. Right. Okay. Yeah. All right. So, just like normal, I know we're on a map that's not really for tokens, but if you guys just want to drag your token on somewhere and hop into initiative, that'll just help us keep track of the rounds. I bet my character tokens aren't in here. Oh, I see you. Your character token's not in there? No. I thought we added your one in. I thought so too, but it's not there. I did not see. Oh, I was so sure we added one in. Alright, hold on. I'll, I'll add another sheet right now. What the fuck? Alright, give me one check mark. Um, here, you 
should be able to see that now. For now, you can just add a token, and that'll be fine. We'll, I'll work on adding the site and stuff to the token once we're in, like, a dungeon. Okay. Um, yeah, I don't know why the... I'm, like, positive we added that in. That's not... So I had the tokens last time, so... Yeah. That's fucking bizarre. Okay. Um, here, I'll, I'll, I'll just add... What do you want the main token to be? I can just put one of the ones... Because I still have to upload it as well. Um, hey, I guess... thank you for the subscription. Appreciate you. I guess the doll. The male doll would be the main character. Alright. There we go, yeah. Um, yeah, now you can drag one of them out. Alright, cool. Roll cool. 20 and dummy again. Excellent. So, um, I'll just, so, if you just roll initiative for, on roll 20, I can just add you in. For Jeff, picking your um, facets, uh, I've got sagacity and sacrifice. I have charm. Mm -hmm. And Will, um, what's yours? Genius and subterfuge are mine. I have sacrifice. Oh, you have sacrifice. No one has, uh, yeah, heroism. Yeah, I mean, but, you know, whatever interests you as a character more, like, you can... Right. There's not probably a lot genius. of penalties for not doubling down. Genius would probably be the best one for my character. Okay. Hell yeah. Alright. Uh, and there are bonuses. Since you have, you'll start with seven agents. Um... There's a whole bunch of different like bonuses you get. It should be in that handout as well. But basically, uh, you get better like skill bonuses. Not so you got twenty-two. Goodness gracious! Wow, thank you. I appreciate that. You got gifted a bunch of stuff. All right, um, sorry, I got distracted. That was very nice, thank you. All right, so, we are going to launch into this campaign for office. All right. Um, so the first one, you can pretty much choose any of those options. You can choose the regular operations if you think one might benefit you. Uh, but those three I listed are all very good choices. Um, and Tessamani is going to respond. She's just going to be at the end of the order for you guys. Cool. So, there's, there's something that I want to do. Yes, so, I have a spell called Persistent Image, right? Okay. Uh, pretty much, uh, I have pretty much a, a lot of 10-foot cubes that I can scatter around in a thousand-foot radius area around myself, and I can have that last for 16 minutes, and it can be programmed to say and look like anything, right? Okay. Uh, I, I pretty much just want to do like an ad campaign for Phineas, uh, and like why he would be a good, um, counselor of gates. I'll say, um, <coughs> that'll give you a bonus on one of your, like a, a bonus on this operation. Alright. Um, so, uh, reminder, so Phineas right now, you have one in everything. Yeah. Uh, for the campaign. So, go ahead, and it sounds like this would be more of a stump thing. You're trying to, like, just, like, motivate these voters, making speeches to the crowds. I'm going to say you can make an operation check here with an additional plus four from that spell. All right. I will use four agents to, uh, to help with this out. And I will also send Seraph, so that would be a plus 10 total. 15. Alright. Uh, that will be a success. Uh, it doesn't exceed Ooh. by a lot, so, um, that, which, uh, facet are you using? Uh, charm, I guess, because okay. I, I have a lot of charm. Charm is now two. Alright. 
Moving on to our doll friend. What are you gonna do? Um, I guess I'll pull with genius. All right, pulling with genius. Hell yeah. Um, so basically, you can choose to send as many agents as you want. I'll go with four. Um, all right, send four of them. So that's going to be basically a D20 uh, plus four here. Okay. Pulling. Oh, that was <laughs> fucking solid. Nice. Um, ooh, that might actually... With genius... Alright, so your genius is going to go up by two, Phineas. Additionally, you can learn um, what three of her current things are at. As an operation? Uh, no, just like you just get to know. Oh, okay. What is her uh, subterfuge? Um, her subterfuge. So she's been here long, you guys. So she had a bit of a background. Her subterfuge is three right now. And what is her charm? Um, her charm is at. Sorry, I'm just having between different tabs right now. Uh, her charm is at four. And what is her heroism? Heroism is at. Now, what's her petrification? <laughs> so high. I bet mine's higher. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> That's actually it's just a petrification off uh, if you guys die. All right. Hell yeah. <laughs> Excellent so far. Uh, Galatis. Okay. So, one of the things I can do is this nifty spell. So, <clears throat> 25 word message to everybody. And I can do it twice a day. So I'm going to use that as part of my stumping. And I will engage my six agents. <clears throat> so what exactly are you like? Or like, what's the vibe of what you're saying to them? Uh... You know, it's just all positive. Why Phineas is going to be better. I mean, I have to ask Phineas for reasons, because, you know, I'm not really sure. He seems kind of sneaky to me, but maybe people like that. I mean, he, he's dressed for the occasion. I'm going to be bonus on that. And what, what facet are you using? Um, using uh, Sacrifice. I would say with with the addition of that spell there, I'm gonna say that's an extra one for you guys in sacrifice. All right, um, Phineas. Um, I'm going to smear. Uh, well, I, I sorry, I got a question. Yes. Um, so usually I get an extra operation because of my ten subterfuge. Do I not get that since we're doing candidate versus personal? Um, you do still get the extra operation right that facet 10. Okay. So, uh, first I'll, um, I'll pull using, um, okay. subterfuge. Okay. And what's, what's your current subterfuge for the subterfuge uh, campaign? Oh, one. You're still at one? Yeah, that's a success. Your subterfuge goes up to two. Uh, and you can find out... Uh, two more of where she's at right now. Uh, s s sagacity and genius. Okay. Uh, her current uh, sagacity is four. Her genius is three. And for my second operation, I want to smear her. Okay. Yeah. Go for the go for the smear campaign. <laughs> I do well. Oh, 
Oh, okay, hold on. Let me double check the sphere one. That's gonna be brutal. All right, you and your agents highlight an opposing character's foibles. You start talking mad shit about her ideas for um, interplanar trade and how she's like a fool for like her uh, concessions with hell and like the devils in the city of Dis. Um, and. I I also note how how a respected postmaster agreed to um, support me in my campaign, and later he turned into stone. <laughs> Ooh, I didn't even think about that. Yeah, that doesn't. That's not a strong look for her. Okay, uh, which which facet was that? That was um. Subterfuge. Okay, with well, a twenty-seven, you lower her subterfuge by two. Uh, so she goes down from three subterfuge to one. That really after all. Alright, that's gonna be her turn. Oh god, alright, she's gonna try to save some fucking face here. Um, alright, what's she gonna do to save face? <laughs> uh, she is gonna start, uh, making speeches about how um, she's starting, like, a cultural exchange program where she's gonna, like, have her ambassadors, uh, go to the elemental planes. Uh, and she is going to be using, uh, a stump roll with her, uh, genius roll. That was fucking atrocious. Uh, she totally fails. Alright, uh, back to the top, Blaze. All right, I would like to pull the people. Charm. Okay. Uh, uh, I will use. I will use four agents. Four agents. That's a ten. That's not gonna do it, unfortunately. All right. You start. Pulling but because. About their opinions, and you get like a little too aggressive about it, and like your mom, ever the cleric, is like, she gets a little bit too like, like she's like proselytizing in the name of God, <laughs> and everyone's like, all right, all right, calm down, we're already in the afterlife, it's okay. Uh, second thing I'm gonna do, I'm going because I have a, uh, I'm also a master of operations. Yes, sir. I am going to use Seraph and the remaining amount of my agents to stump by by just like going going around and telling about how uh, how Phineas is going to make his deals work and you know talk with the other planes and not much to, not so much as a cultural exchange but just like get good relations with the other planes. Okay. So that will be, <clears throat> and they'll have no choice. <laughs> that is a another fifteen. Um, and that was for pull, right? Or is that? That is for stomp. Stomp. Um, do and which which facet was it? Charm. Charm. What's your current charm, Phineas, for a campaign? Uh, two. Two. That's gonna be just shy. Nuts. Jeff, what's what's the male doll's name again? I'm gonna change it because on the stream it just says Jeff's new sheet. Oh, uh, Sven. S V E N. Right. That should be. All right, we'll go. Right. There we go. All right, cool, cool. Now it's it. All right, uh, so. All so, right, Sven, hey, you guys. Um, I guess we'll st stump. I've got three remaining uh, agents. Hmm. You you can use all your agents, your agents each round. Agents recharge. Sorry, yeah, I did not clarify that. Oh, okay. Yeah. The the, the oh, only time you really need to hold back is sometimes it's like it doesn't matter as much for the election, but sometimes you can send agents on like risky ops where you might lose it. Okay. Or you can send it's them on like, continuing um, operations. Yeah, or continuing operations. I have to be careful. It's almost like, um, like you know, in Assassin's Creed, where you could like send like assassins around the world. It's kind of like that, or other games. Never, 
Never played Assassin's Creed. Oh, uh, <laughs> I can't think of another game that has that mechanic. That was all I had. No, I, I know a few games that use this mechanic, so uh, yeah. Okay. Cool, cool, cool. Uh, all right, yeah, but you could add, so you could add all of them if you would like to that. So that would be okay. four more, so 12. Um, that is also going to be just shot. Uh, Galatis. <clears throat> hey, guys. I think the male doll is the one who's in charge. <laughs> Not well, the girl. <laughs> I'm starting to suspect that myself. Yeah. That's I mean, creepy. I did see him glowing like a couple times and like lightning yeah. was coming from him. He's been casting spells. Discussion has started. <laughs> yeah. I don't know. We should probably keep an eye on him. Yeah, yeah. All right, so I'm going to do the same thing. Stump for sacrifice. All right, stump for sacrifice. Six. Go for your the six agents and mages decree. Hell yeah. I'm gonna add a uh, what, what level spells? Major degree. Uh, five. Oh, five. I'll add on like a plus four to that. So it's a nineteen. Um, what's your current uh, Matt Phineas? In sacrifice, yeah. two. Two. Okay, so it's gonna be. Should be it's now two. nine. <laughs> it's not now nine, but it does go up. <laughs> that is a success. <laughs> That brings us back to Phineas, the campaign the campaigner himself. Uh, I'll stump using subterfuge, okay. um, just kind of poking some holes in some of her plans to make it seem like there might be unintended consequences that could be detrimental to the district. Do you want to smear her or stump her? Uh, Basically, stump will raise you, smear will lower her. Okay. Um, I'll start with stump, and then I'll, I'll do that to smear her. Okay, start with stump. Um, 21. 21. Um, and what's your current... Subterfuge. What? Uh, 2. 2. Um, that is just going to hit... That's gonna You're going to go up by 2. You just, by 1 point, managed to get the 2 points in your basket there. Alright, and so you want to do a smear on her? Um, basically, the smear, you can, you can choose... You're using charm or subterfuge, but you can choose what you want to lower her in. Uh, I'm going to lower her genius. Okay. Oh. Right, that's certainly you, You're cruel. Uh, <laughs> operation exceeds by five or more. G guys, I think I've... I think I was meant to be a politician. Uh, yeah, I think so. Five or more, her genius chops by two points. Um, all right, that's gonna be it's gonna be her turn now. Um, all right, so now this is where some some shits really get going here. Um, ooh, okay, okay, hold on. I take that back. It doesn't go down by two. Um, give me a check to gather information, though, Phineas. Um, am I doing diplomacy or perception? Uh, diplomacy. Or percept. I'll say either one for this, for this. This is a little kind of a uncouth situation here, not normal. Oh, nat 20. Holy fuck. Okay. <laughs> uh, Alright, so. Your check is actually only a 20 instead of a 25 and there's a reason for that um you have heard that there are some operatives going around fucking up your campaign's infrastructure uh like destroying pamphlets collapsing stages your agents are using and a few witnesses even report seeing disembodied eyes floating nearby before the accident with that nat 20 though there is something perhaps even more disturbing about this sabotage a few people saw some of the saboteurs, and while they didn't see their faces, they saw they had symbols stitched on them in various places of a one-eyed mass, the symbol of Nordorber. He was the god of, like, thieves and murder. Well, that's very sporting. <laughs> yeah. um, okay, she is gonna desperately try... 
um, to do stump here. Try to recover a little bit. Uh, she's actually, you know what? She's going to double down on her charm. All right, that's much better. Her charm's going to go by two. Um, what is your, what are your current, uh, what's your current, uh, like, facets at, Phineas, for the campaign? I just want to see where we're at in terms of who's winning. Uh, Subfuge huge four, charm two, sagacity one, genius three, heroism one, sacrifice three. As of now, it's about a dead heat. All right, uh, that is gonna bring us into the third phase. Um, All right. The of the campaign, um, the Grand Rotunda, which is like the big debate stage you guys saw in that art, is hosting a major uh, like festival around it with like food, music, oper like multiple opportunities throughout the day for you guys to give speeches. This phase is special because any point gains are doubled, but so are any losses doubled during this phase. Wunderbar. All right. I am going to smear subterfuge. Okay. You're going to use subterfuge to smear her? Uh, what are you trying to lower? No, no, no. I'm, I'm going to use charm to... Uh, oh, you're uh, using uh, charm to yeah. smear her subterfuge stat. Gotcha, gotcha. Yes. Sorry. I think her subterfuge is only out of one... Oh. Um, Never mind. Yeah, you guys didn't know her, sub her subterfuge is pretty low right now. Alright, sorry. Uh, genius then. I'm going to uh, <clears throat> kind of expose her uh, maybe dirty dealings with Norgorber. Oh, okay. Um, yeah. Take your chance on the stage to do this speech. Go ahead and make your, your roll. I'm I'm gonna I'm gonna go all in because I can't really have this failing. <laughs> okay, go ahead. Twenty one. All right, so that is a success, and because it's doubled, her genius is gonna go down by two. Her genius is not looking high. However, I'm gonna say since this is your round right here, g give me uh, Blaze can give me a sense motive check on. Uh, can it be Seraph? Sure, I'll say Seraph. You can do a Seraph do a sense motive on uh, cool. Samani. 37. 37, okay. Um, she looks, like, aghast and shocked at this uh, accusation you're making. It seems legit. She, like, seems surprised at this, like, Norgorber argument all of a sudden. Alright. Uh, Sven. Uh, we'll, we'll attempt to, uh, smear, or stump again. Attempt to stump, okay. 20, and, uh, what fast are you doing? Uh, genius. Genius, okay. Um, what's your current genius, Phineas, for the campaign? Three. Three? Uh, it's not gonna... Oh, but it is on the rotunda day, so you get two points in genius, so that is a success. Would have been one, but it's doubled on this, uh, this special... Well, special week of uh, staged perform staged uh, debates. All right, uh, Galatus. Okay. <clears throat> um, what do we need to increase? Well, um, our heroism's at a one, and hers is at a two. So, so that would be an easy way to make it up. Uh, so, Ben, as far as the rule goes, we're not really using anything other than our um, facet rank tells us how many agents we can use. But other than that, nothing's really modifying the, the checks, right? Um, I would say, I mean, I, I've given some points for like, the creative use of those spells. If you uh -huh. have stuff you could throw in, like, I'm willing to be persuaded. I well, I'm just w you wondering, can I... skills at this point that are like, you, that you've, you've honed your spycraft. Right, so I have Sagacity and Sacrifice. Are those the only ones I can really increase? Or can I use those agents to do a different facet? Oh, like can you use Sagacity to try to increase, like, Charm? 
Yeah. Um, let's see. Or are we limited to... I would say... I'm going to look at the other adva like advanced operations. I would say you could maybe run a different operation to try that. So you want to use Sagacity or which one? Sacrifice. Sacrifice. All right. I would say um, there is an Operation Tend Wounds, which is normally like uh, helping you know people recover from attacks. There have been some people that have been hurt in these like stage collapses and stuff. If you want to try to use Sacrifice, and then like once you save those people, the operation be like, hey, you know my candidate's good at this, you could try to raise a facet of your choice. Alright, that sounds good. So I'm gonna say, yeah, uh, do a 10 wounds check. Okay. Yeah, I know that's not exactly what this one is for, for those who might have seen the 10 wounds one for. Alright, 14. Uh, are there any other bonuses to that? I'm not sure that uh, Mage Degree will do much. Yeah, I'd say Mage Crew as much for this one. I'm going to say that that's, like, uh, just shy of being a success, then. If you're trying to get uh, the other the other one. Okay. All right, uh, Phineas. But you're welcome to try that same strat again next time. So this, is our, this is our third round. Yeah. I'm going to use Subterfuge to... Can, can they go negative? Can the facets go negative? Uh, they can in the campaign, yes. You can, like, really destroy someone's reputation. So, um... I'll say right now, one of my first stats is already negative for you guys. Nice. Um, I'm gonna go for, uh, attacking her charm. Okay. Uh, using subterfuge. So, I... I'm gonna have a, a child in the crowd, like you know how the politicians kiss babies. Well, this child is gonna get bitten by one of her snake hairs. Oh, that's so brutal. <laughs> <laughs> All right, twenty-four. Can I use inspiration on these? Uh, ooh, the inspirations we got in this book. Uh, I was thinking about uh, investigator inspiration. Oh, investigator inspiration. I would say probably not, because those are for, like, in-the-moment checks, and these are, like, weeks at a time. Gotcha. Okay. Um, that's certainly a success, though. And you're going for her charm, you said? Yeah. Okay, so normally that would have dropped her charm by one, but because of this rotunda yeah. event, you drop her charm by two. As she like, uh, tries to, like, you know, play it off with her, her you know, her cabinet's like, that's not what happened. Like... You know, the guy, the kid was like slapping one of the snakes. It was just like a defensive response. And everyone's like, she fucking bit a kid. <laughs> also, what kind of life was this kid living that he got sent to like the plane of pure law for his afterlife? <laughs> I mean, it's a good kid. <laughs> I, can't, I, can't, I can't think of any of my preschoolers that would go to fucking access. <laughs> um, That's the kind of kid you want to adopt. <laughs> Enough. Uh, you still have your extra operation though, right? Yeah, I'm gonna attack her uh, heroism. Oh, God. Double smear campaign. Okay. Go for it. I mean, can she really be a hero if followers of Norgober are are following her and supporting her? She's so upset by that. She's like, I don't know what's happening. This is what are you attacking? Her um. Heroism. Her heroism. God, that's a success on her heroism. That might be enough to. Oh my god, that might make it minus four. Holy shit, one sec. So you got 21, 15, plus her current rank, you succeed. That's like, you almost dropped her by four in one go, but you do drop her by two because of her time today. Nice. Oh my god, that would have been devastating. Alright. Ooh, she's really got to pull something off here. Okay, she's gonna try and stump um, her sacrifice, is what she's going for here. That is enough for one double to two for today. Alright. Uh, 
that is the end of day three of seven. Or not day, you know, phase three of seven. This campaign's taking place over like a month and a half, basically. Mm -hmm. Um There are no special shenanigans for phase four. Cool. Uh what happened while I was gone? Uh basically um she got spear campaigned hard by Phineas. <laughs> Phineas is destroying her. Cool. I would like to pull the population with charm. Alright, so this might get your guys' charm up a little bit, as well as potentially revealing some of her, where some of her facets are. Might as well go all in. 16. 16. Uh, what's your current charm, Phineas? Two. Two. So that's not going to up your charm by anything, but it will let you uh, see at least... What's she got right now? You can see at least one of her facets. Sacrifice is something you don't know. You want to see sacrifice? Uh, her sacrifice is at four right now. Oh... That, that's definitely success. Uh, Sven, what are you thinking? Um, we're gonna pull with charm. Pull with charm. Okay, go for it. Eleven is not gonna be enough. It's an unfortunate roll. Sorry. Yep. <laughs> uh, Galatis. All right, well, I'm not going to let her come after Phineas's sacrifice like that. Phineas can sacrifice with the with the best of them. <laughs> like, I don't know who else can sacrifice more than Phineas. I'm a very giving man. <laughs> no, no, you, you make it's sacrifices. Like some of the people like, around town are like, yeah, that makes sense. They're like nodding in the streets. <laughs> All right, so we're going to also use a mage decree to bolster this. So. Okay. Dang, I cannot roll tonight. So the mage decree would bring up to like a fifteen, um, and that was for which one? Sacrifice. Sacrifice. What's your sacrifice at right now? Uh, three. Three. Okay, so sacrifice isn't gonna go up, but however, with a fifteen, you know, your pull can reveal another one of her current uh, stats. Phineas, what do you want to know? Uh, let's check on the status of her charm. Charm, it is. Um, her charm, much like her sacrifice, is also at four. Uh, Phineas. So I'm going to smear her sacrifice. Okay. Um, you know, she actually was able to give a lot more to people in need, but she only wanted to give enough that it was, you know, singing. She didn't actually care about the people. You see one of the, like, awakened fucking cockatiels fly by. It's like, harsh! <laughs> <laughs> um, I'm coming for you oh next. God, 28. <laughs> oh, no. Dang, Will. How, how are you getting those rolls, uh, man? Yeah, her sacrifice is going to go down from four to two. It goes down by two. This is what it's like to watch you in combat, Jeff. <laughs> that's, that's a fair counterpoint, honestly. This is like Phineas's fucking domain right now. Um, and then for my second action, I'm going to... Facet 10. Okay, go ahead. Uh, I'm going to um, bring down her charms more. Uh, okay. Yeah, I, I'm, I'm going to keep pushing this narrative that she has so little control over herself that she can't possibly control the district. So, uh, you know, her snakes are going to bite some elderly person who was a supporter and now is turning against her because of it. Turning into a very realistic parallel to campaigns I've witnessed in real life. Wait, make your, make your oh, yes. Why? <laughs> <laughs> Holy shit. Okay. Yeah, no one's gonna vote for her. Her sacrifice <laughs> and charm both went down from four to two that round. Um, her campaign took a hit this, this fucking round. Oh god, those were her, some of her best. Okay, uh, it's Tessa Mani up next. 
He's gonna need a big win here on some of this. All right, all right, so she is going, she's actually gonna try and up her sagacity. Actually, no, she's trying to up subterfuge here while, uh, sorry, hold on, let me double check what she is. Yeah, she's trying to up subterfuge through a pole and then trying to figure out what Phineas is at for some stuff. Okay, her subterfuge is gonna go up by one. Um, and but she only gets to know one of what you're at. Uh, Phineas, she wants to her agents start figuring out what your um sagacity is. At. It's a one. It's a one. Okay. <laughs> okay. Noted. She makes she makes note of that. Um. Okay. This is like messing with my brain as I try to divorce the knowledge that she has from what I know that you guys are doing. <laughs> Uh, Blaze, this is round five, or Persona Phase five. Um, do, do, do. <laughs> oh. <laughs> um, so. Refresh my memory, Blaze. Mm -hmm. Um, you you have an ancestor who was uh, you had a powerful ancestor, right? That is giving you your bloodline stuff. Correct. Okay. How old would you say they they would be now, in, if they were still alive? Like a good several thousand. It's it's a long okay. ways away bloodline. Um. You've seen etchings of this, like, ancestor, and from those etchings, you recognize him when he shows up in this district and begins telling exceptionally embarrassing stories about your family. Um. Um. Uh, it, Phineas, can you cast True Sight on other people or just yourself? Uh, only myself. Um, All right. You can give me since this is your. I rolled for which relative person is gonna be. This is your relative, Blaze. Uh, give me a perception check. All right. Just one second, please. Nat 20, 39. Another nat 20 perception. Uh, you see the people that, like, escorted him to this political venue you guys are currently at, um, have Norgorber holy symbols tucked under their shirts. Okay. Um, but basically, so, uh, what is your best facet, Blaze? Charm. Okay. Um, Phineas, your charm is gonna go down by one as people relate the embarrassment of this old man to Blaze, to your campaign. Alright. Uh, they, so... They, they play in real dirty. <laughs> I want to go up and talk to him, see if he's, like, actually... Uh... <laughs> my, my, like, uh... A forefather. Okay. Um... You, he, you walk up to him and he's just like, Blaze, my boy! Oh my god, my god, my last. <laughs> Sorry, I'm very blind. He's very confused. Very Look, you know, it's been thousands of years and I haven't solved the damn tattoos on my body. Those fine chaps said they'd help me solve them if I told them some of our family's embarrassing secrets. Do you know how often I scry upon our family over these long aeons? It's a lot. I'm very bored. That's understandable. We, uh, were quite interesting. Uh, anyways, um... That's true, you've been doing some good work with the fireball spell. I'm very impressed. Uh, yeah, cool. Um, real quick, I, I got a, I got a quick question. Yes? I, I know you're going a little bit deaf, but that, that's fine. Uh, go away, and I'm going to touch him, and I'm going to cast Plane Shift. <laughs> <laughs> he's like, he like leans in for those like old fashioned ear trumpets. And he's like, what? <laughs> and then you just like, I'll talk to you later. The ear trumpet <laughs> and him, and he just vanishes. Cool. <laughs>
Um, <laughs> incredible. Uh, but it's like, it's like, wait, take this! And he's gonna do the random item drop from Drow. He's like, it's from my personal stores! Uh, give me, what do you want to roll for there with the... Oh, I'll, I'll roll just for Wondrous. Alright, cool. Give me a d12 and do 100. I was waiting for opportunity to drop this in. Drop it in. Nine. Nine. Alright, um, that is... And 17. Alright, give me a spellcraft check. Wait, hold on. Uh, give me a spell check on this guy. 28. Alright. Two. Um. Cool. You might notice this then. 28, you said? Correct. Okay. Uh, that is the next slot. Um. You guys might find a subterfuge use for this, actually. Um, at first, it appears to be an amulet that uh, would prevent people from, like, scrying on you and influencing you with, like, detect thoughts and whatnot. Um, however, uh, it is not an amulet of proof against detection location. It is an amulet of inescapable location. Gives you a minus 10 on all saves against divinations. <laughs> oh, that's cool. <laughs> So I, I'm sure you could think of some shenanigans now, but yeah, it's, it's an am, it is a cursed amulet of inescapable location. Cool. I, I have a plan for that for my next, uh, for my next persona phase. Concerning. <laughs> um, all right. Um, but with all that happening anyway, uh, you never actually got to make your check. Blaze, what do you want to do during this round? Oh, yeah. Because your dad kind of came in, smeared Phineas's credit through you. All and right. You plane shifted him away. Cool. I am going to do uh, one thing, and that is regale the people of the uh, kind, of, kind of like really good things that we've done in the material plane. Okay. Uh, and thus, how we would be doing good stuff here as well. And I'll do that as a stump. Alright, cool. Um, what fast do you want to start? Uh, I would like to, uh... Let's see. Is there anyone that's particularly high right now? Because they just got reduced reduced a bunch. Um, well, our charm is a 1 and hers is a 2. So we're pretty close on charm. If we could get it up, I could take it down on her side. Alright, I'll uh, try to increase our charm. Okay. Go ahead and make your roll. Uh, 14 is 9. Uh, yeah. Nuts. All right. Um. Ben. Um. I we will attempt. To... I believe in you and your daughter and your other your other. Uh, daughter. <laughs> <laughs> uh, we will probably attempt to stump. Okay. Um. Anything that we need to uh, stump right now? Uh, Phineas, what do you what do you need stumping? Uh, so the best thing for us to smoke right now would be sacrifice and charm. Okay. Um, we'll sacrifice. Okay. Oh, there's the rolls. What's your sacrifice at right now? <laughs> Three. Three. Okay. Uh, yeah, you. That's impressive. You exceeded it by five or more. Um, you get two facet points to that now. Hell yeah. Excellent work by Spen. Uh, Galvis. Well, I'm gonna do the increased sagacity and do the Mage's Decree to bump it up. Okay. Um, I'm also going to spend a little bit of time trying to find out more about this, our opponent. And does she know where her support is coming from? Um, yeah, I'd say you try to either, like, sense motive on her, or, like, gather some information. Yeah. Uh, whichever. Alright, so there's the sagacity roll, plus whatever for Mage's Decree. Okay. Uh, sagacity. Okay. So, that is... What's your current sagacity, Phineas? A one. one. Okay, so that's gonna be a sagacity by two. I did something... Um, brings you close to her sagacity. 
Um, she's trying to, like, redirect the focus away from this Norgorber stuff, but not, not in a way that it's like she's trying to hide their involvement. It's more like she's like, I'm not involved with this, and I don't know what's happening. Like, I don't know why okay. the Norborites are, like, fucking with my campaign. Or, like, trying to help my campaign. <laughs> or both, you know. She's like, I don't enjoy this. <laughs> All right. Um, Phineas. Uh, I start off by attacking her charm. I I just can't believe that she took advantage of an elderly dementia oh dragon to embarrass one of my campaign managers. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Um, God damn it. Um, that is going to be a success. Bumping her charm down by two. And and then I'm going to attack her uh, sagacity. Okay. Um, you know this. It's just such a slipshod ran campaign. She doesn't know what she's doing. She doesn't know who her supporter is. <laughs> are she? Uh, she doesn't know who her constituents really are. Oh, uh, it's finally caught up with me. Finally caught up with you. Yeah, that, that's not a success. <laughs> um, but technically, you don't lose any from a failure on that roll, so. You don't lose anything, but uh, neither does she. All right. It's going to be back to her. Um, she, like, makes zero mention of uh, Blaze's elderly relative in her, in her speeches. Like, doesn't want to, like, have anything to do with it. She is, however, going to... Something you guys can do as well, remember. She's going to spend some gold to get some more people watching. Um, Cheater. Well, that's how... It basically gives you a bonus to the roll. Okay. Uh, she is going to do a stump. She doesn't want to sabotage you guys. She feels bad about what's happening. And she is going to stump her... Uh, sacrifice. Uh, that is all she can do, though. She is not Phineas, does not have uh, two operations. All right, that brings us into the penultimate week of this campaign. Um, I'm going to say that um, anyone on their turn can make a diplomacy check to gather information about the change in phase six. All right, uh, then I will do so right now. Diplomacy, right? Mm -hmm. 39. Uh, word is she received a huge and suspicious contribution from an anonymous donor. Um, cool. She's so far behind in the polls right now, she is using it to attract a major gathering of voters this month. All right, my plan is currently twofold, but will be threefold. Phase one. I am going to gift the amulet as a show of good faith. To her? Yes. Okay, give me a bluff check. You should probably have somebody who's not you give it to them. No, no. Let's, let's, hear, let's hear Blaze out. <laughs> yeah. So I'm going to give the amulet as a show of good faith. That's a nat 20. Nat 20. <laughs> <laughs> She's like, wait, Hello. Hello. this amulet's beautiful. <laughs> Immediately puts it on. <laughs> cool. Uh, for phase two, I will I now have Seraph cast time. greater scrying on them every single day. Okay, <laughs> spend your, a lot of your time scrying uh, on the Medusa to Smani. Yeah, so they need to make a will save. I'm just gonna make one will save for like the the phase, just to make it easy. Yeah. Oh. Uh, what did they roll? Minus ten. Even with her regular bonus, she has negative three. So I don't think she succeeded. Uh huh. All right. So I can see, uh, you know, whatever she's doing. Okay. Uh, as it as well as detect chaos, detect evil, detect good, detect law, detect magic, and read magic and tongues. While I'm scrying. So many things. Um, I mean, she's lawful neutral. 
Okay, I'll just I'll just keep that going every now and again. Cool. <laughs> I'll, I'll I'll keep doing that just to see if there's any dirty dealings going on. Okay. Um, I want to say with with all that going on, I feel like that might just be your phase for that one. Yeah, that's understandable. Um, that was all that I was planning to do for this. One. It was very successful, uh, Sven. Uh, we're gonna pull. All right, go ahead. Eighteen. Um, that is gonna be a success. Uh, you're pulling with genius, I believe. So, so genius is gonna go up by. What's your genius at right now, Phineas? Uh, five. Oh, at five? Holy fuck! Um, <laughs> it actually doesn't go up. Then. Your genius is very high. You do, however, you can find out two of her current stats. Um. So, what would you guys want to find out? Uh, her facets, uh, I mean, sorry, not stats. What's her s sagacity right now? Um, her sagacity is currently four. Charm? And her charm is zero. Okay. There was a moment during this campaign for the, the Counselor of Gates position where her, her, her charm was six for a while, and now it is zero. <laughs> um... All right, yeah, so you, you get those two revealed, um, which is, I mean, that's helpful. Uh, Galatis, what you thinking? So I'm going to do diplomacy first here. Okay. Uh, just to, to gather more about her donation. Just <clears throat> any more useful information about her. Um, I mean, you probably already suspected, I would say, that uh, you now you combined having a 47 with the nat 20. It was definitely Norgorber worshippers who, um, who did this. And does she know that? Um, I would say with a 47, I think you would suspect she does know. That being said, she like took it because she's losing. She feels, she doesn't feel good at Perfect. All right, so we're gonna make sure everybody knows that she was taking money from Norgerber to fund Brutal. her campaign. <laughs> Brutal response. <laughs> and what do we get for how much do pluses to rolls cost? A uh, hundred gold pieces for a plus one. All right, so I'm gonna drop a grand. No, you can only get up to a plus five. Plus five. Sorry, I should have clarified. You know what? I'm gonna pay a grand to get that plus five. Okay. <laughs> the voters are like extra enticed. Like, there's not more of them, but they're like, "Wow, like this guy's really throwing some gold around." Okay. All right, Valorant so is just like in the crowd, like passing out, like secretly, like shaking hands. But when he like pulls his hand back, he like leaves a few gold coins in their hand. Is <laughs> that real subtle transfer of cash? All right, so um. Yeah, so you get a plus. Five on whatever roll this is gonna be. All right. So, what do I need to roll here? I mean, can I use that? I mean, is that definitely a smear? Um, I would say that's like definitely a smear. All right. So, what do you roll for the smear? I think it's charm or subterfuge. Yeah, I don't have either of those. I'm gonna allow it because you spent a thousand gold. I'm gonna say you'll take. Basically, the 1,000 gold is buying you the ability to smear with something else. All right. Less of, a, less of a bonus and more like it lets you do it in the first place. Yeah, and I'll use my uh, <clears throat> mage decree to make sure everybody knows. Okay. All right, so what am I going to get for pluses on the roll? Honestly, I can't necessarily... You don't get the plus five, but it, you basically bought the ability to do this with a different facet. So D20 plus six... Plus whatever plus four, bonus. Plus four for Mage's Decree is 16. And what are what are you smearing? Uh, what's her... Sagacity is what she's is the only thing she's leading in right now, as far as we know. You would know that like, right, the more she's leading something, the harder it's going to be to succeed. So that, that might not clear her best thing. 
All right. What what other one, Phineas? Um, her subterfuge is a dupe. All right, subterfuge it is. Okay, you would clear her subterfuge. That, that would bring subterfuge down by one. Um, okay. Phineas. I like being able to just let other people know stuff that's true and have that really effective negatively. Yeah, for real. <laughs> So, uh, right, so Phineas, this is uh, your penultimate round. Okay, so I'm going to spend a, a thousand gold to use subterfuge to raise my sagacity. Why did I? Why did I? <laughs> why did you remind us? Oh, why did I set that precedent? Fuck, <laughs> kill me. Okay, go ahead. <laughs> um, okay. And what are you? What are you? Tar what are you doing with it? You're smearing. No, I'm raising my sagacity. Oh, so I'm a three. Sagacity. Okay. Uh, yeah. What's your current sagacity at? A three. Um, okay, sorry. That's going to raise sagacity by two. And then I'm going to tear apart her sagacity. Um, Arrow. Such a brutal way to phrase it. <laughs> I'm going to rend it limb from limb. All right. Um, I got to think of some synonyms for brutal. I've used that word too many times tonight. Uh, all right. Make your, make your roll for... Smearing, uh, testimony. Um, and you were smearing which one? Uh, sagacity. sagacity. Uh, that's enough to get sagacity down by one. Um, okay. You know, by the end of this campaign, she's going to be so humiliated, she'll have to leave the district altogether. <laughs> All right, it is her turn. Um... No matter what, she's going to get an extra plus one on whatever facet she's trying to bump here because of the suspicious contribution. Um, but she is going to try and... <coughs> I mean, really, the only way she's going to win is if she bumps one of her own things up. She's going to try to bump Subterfuge. Oh, that's very successful. All right. Her subterfuge stat raises. This is the final round. Excuse me. Um, what a shame it is in the final round. Um, at this point, um, as you guys are like preparing for uh, this day. Like this final, or this this final, you know, phase of the campaign. Um, wherever you guys are staying, um, I'm going to bring us to a temporary map. Our, our town battle map again. There's a lot of suburbs here. Um, but you guys hear a commotion coming from nearby your place of residence. Uh, there are people screaming for help nearby. Cool. Uh, small question. Uh, has my greater scrying revealed anything? Greater scrying would. I'm gonna say you're gonna, you're gonna get a free reveal. Her um, top three right now. I'm not gonna say what the numbers are. You know her top three where she's succeeding are sacrifice, sagacity, subterfuge. Her top three right now. Cool. Um, but assuming you guys run closer over to the screaming as people are begging for help. Yes, Galatus the hero. Yes. And Valeros the sidekick. <laughs> and Phineas the politician needing a good uh, story. And Blaze the PR manager. <laughs> and Sven, the doll. And Sven. You guys, have, you guys haven't even met Sven yet. And He's Jessica, the person who follows us around. <laughs> Oh, that's a C. I just can't smell. 
<laughs> I couldn't find the token. I'm like, it's how you spell it. And I'm like, no, no, it's not. C is for cultist and Cthulhu. C is for Cthulhu. You see these creatures as you round the corner. Got a frog hemoth? Uh, it sure is. Whoa! Alright. Now, um, before we roll into initiative, I'm just gonna take a picture. Sorry, remember the order of the campaign. But we are gonna roll initiative separately in the fight. Uh, you see, uh, they are, like, just attacking some people. As you guys round the corner, um, the- this is actually a male Naga. Um, pop it up like this so you guys can see the art. Finally, the targets. It like slaps the frog team of this tail. Get them. And we're going to roll for it. Okay. Yeah, good luck with that. Oh, shit. <laughs> Jesus Christ. Um, here, I'm gonna. Just so people watching might not know. Here's the frog team. This is what it looks like. I love frog hemoths. Um, all right, Blaze. What do, what do? I dislike the idea of a naga having hair, so I'm going to disintegrate it. Okay, fair enough. <laughs> Seems fair. Uh, all right, make your... Is it, is it just the save, or is the range touch with disintegrate? I'm pretty sure it's just a save. Uh... In that case, it's gonna make a fortitude save. Um, that's gonna be a 29. Let me see if that succeeds, because that's very that's cool. Stupid high save, so that's gonna be like right on the cusp. My PC is 29. Okay, so it just barely succeeds, but I believe that's still 5d6 of damage you're gonna do to the knife. That is correct. This would be a great place to do the next loot drop. Cool. 15 damage. And... Fuck. <laughs> and, uh, Seraph is going to... They are going to cast, a uh, Cold Ice Strike on the Naga as well. Uh, yes, reflex. Reflex. Um, it got a summon check bonus. 17. Which probably doesn't work. It does not. Alright, the ice crystallizes. Attacking the and deals 42 damage. Oh, not like that. Snake no like cold. And then, uh, since that was a swift action. Oh, right. Uh,. Yes, Cold Ice Strike is a swift action. It's very pog. Uh, and then they are going to cast Blessing of Fervor on the party. Okay. Divine Super Haste. Um, Alright, Galatus and Valoros. Alright, Galatus is going to start by casting Battle Mind Link. Makes sense. And then we're going to use the extra movement speed Here's from... And we're going to get into position. And, and then Valoros. Because it fucking lost uh, Go ahead. <laughs> and then Valoros is going to take one shot. All right. So make that shot. After challenging the frog hemoth. Okay. I challenge the frog hemoth. Crit doesn't confirm. But that does hit for a 33. I do get plus four to confirm crits. It's a nat one. I don't Dad. think you can confirm crits on that one. But e e I'll tell you right now, even plus four, uh, it wouldn't hit. It's flat footed. It's flat footed. All right. <laughs> Frog hemoths have the most insane. Like all of their armor is a natural armor bonus. Yeah. It's literally like There's plus three. one dex and then like plus a billion natural armor. <laughs> <clears throat> uh, but still, 33 is not. Nothing to sneeze at with this thing. It's a good chunk of its health. All right. That is going to be our 
Uh, you realize this one is a little bit uh, tougher than most. It's actually a fiendish frog here. <clears throat> Fiend teameth. That, that's not going to help it, I don't think. <laughs> no, I don't, I don't. <laughs> uh, however, Galatus, you're, you're good aligned, right? Uh, yes. It is going to smite good on you. <laughs> it's a paladin frog behemoth. <laughs> no, uh, anything with the fiendish template gets one per day smite good. Nice. <laughs> Alright, you know what? I'm gonna try and parry that. You see its tentacles start, like, blazing with black fire. It's like, whoa! And just goes in for the attack. That's a lot of low rolls. Um, I'm starting with its tentacles. Uh, you want to parry its tentacles? Yep. Okay. Um... Parry the first tentacle. Do you want to repost? Yeah, I do. Okay. Um, so, repost for 45. Uh, and this frog hemoth is not lawful. Alright. Um, second tentacle comes in. Are you trying to parry this one as well? Am. Okay. Does not parry. Nope. Um, what's your current AC? I just want to make sure this actually for sure hits. 30. Okay, that is going to hit. Um, it is going to deal... Oh, it's got smite good active. So it's going to be a bit more, actually. It's going to deal you 19 damage. Uh, and what is your CMD? It's going to try to wrap you up in that tentacle. Is... <laughs> 30, as well. Oh, you got so lucky. It literally could only fail that on a 1 or a 2. Uh, but it does not <laughs> have you. Um, there, that was the second tentacle. Third tentacle. Parry! Okay. That does parry it. Uh, go ahead and repose. Repost! Oh, no, wait. One repost per? Is that right? Uh, I Shoot. think you can still repost. As long as you All have right. op attack still, which I believe you still. Feel. Yeah. Oh right, right. Okay. Um. Okay. So that do some more damage. If thirty-one, if thir does thirty-one hit? Uh, thirty-one does hit. Yeah. Okay. Um. Do okay. Uh. Fourth tentacle. Sorry, there's a lot of fucking tentacles. <laughs> parry that tentacle too. Oh, right. what a that bad. That one does roll. not parry. This is also a potential crit on this tentacle. Is going to confirm. Ow. Which is going to multiply the smite as well. So. Yikes. Um, that's going to be 37 damage from the fourth tentacle. Um, it is then. It got an at one on the grab, so it's not going to grab you. Next, it is going to try and bite you. Okay, uh, well, I do have a... That doesn't... Wait, hold on. I do, have, pl it, but it I do have plus parry. two from his challenge. Oh, there's a plus two on this? Yeah. Okay, so that does parry. That does parry. Okay. And then we'll try and repost and teach him not to... Um... Jesus fuck. Um... <laughs> Hit me with smites. Okay. <laughs> that does crit on him for 54. <laughs> Uh, which I believe would trigger an op attack from Valorous, right? It does, yes. <laughs> oh, and another critical. Darn. Jesus, fuck. Um, First, that triggers another one for Galatus, too. Okay, well, if, it, if you hit him on this one, Galatus, he might just be dead. Oh, and then that triggers another Stop. one from Valorous. Stop, no! <laughs> <laughs> what, the fuck? what is this bullshit? Um, it goes to bite you, and you just, bam, 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 bam like, rapiers, like, sh 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 stabbing from multiple sides. The black flame on its arms go out, uh, and it just drops. Um, okay. That, that was painful. Did you see him hit me? This guy... You're gonna need some ointment on that. His health has been lowered the requisite amount, plus you guys killed the frog, Hemoth. The Naga is just like, 
Hold on, let's not be hasty. I give up, I give up. Um, oh, that's a little bit disappointing. Do you guys uh, give in? Or, like, do you guys, like, let him give up? He doesn't, like, have any weapons he can throw down or anything. Uh, yo, Galadis, you have some know, them, right? Just being the level you are, Nagas are typically spellcasters. Got to sense motive on this bad boy. Yeah, yeah, sense motive on that bad boy. Okay, go ahead. Oh, he's a fucking coward. He's such a coward. He's absolutely serious. On your belly. He was talking a strong game because he had like a frog hemoth that was empowered by like hell or the abyss. Uh, he's fully not into this anymore. <laughs> <laughs> All right, I tell him to get down on his belly. Just full prone snake on the ground. Yeah. <laughs> you have a choice. You can join the Legions of the Whispering King, or you can die. Oh, I'll, I'll join. Oh, sorry, that's fine. I'll join. Please. I'll join. I just, <laughs> I'll join. It's fine. I don't want to go back to being dead. I'll put uh, down the contract. Uh, he, uh, what can't you he activates Mage Hand and, like, signs it as the pen just floats through the air. <laughs> He's like, I'll tell you whatever you want. Just let me go. <laughs> Please. Who sent you? So, Seraph, can you use some healing over here? I work yeah, for Norgorbo's agents. We operate in a secret hideout on the outskirts of Dusk Fathom. Uh, give me a knowledge religion check. Now that you guys have heard. So Phineas and oh my god, Nat 20. Um Phineas and Galatas, something clicks. This is a lot of different deities have these kind of like sub realms, right? Like kind of like a demi plane. No one really talks about Norgorber's demi plane because he's like his worship is banned in Taldor in most countries. All of a sudden, for Phineas and Galatas, it clicks. His demi plane is called Dusk Fathom. And in kind of a metaphysical sense, it is below access. Access. It is like the secret tunnels and like disgusting sub levels of access. The plane of law is Norgorber's plane of Dusk Fathom. All right. Does anybody else think that's just wrong? A little bit. You know, I'm really ready to go back to the real plane. Yeah, but we gotta do the thing first, Fun and then fact, find the uh, guy. Axiomites are typically okay with it, because they think that the nearby proximity of a plane of thieves promotes stronger law and order in their plane. <laughs> what a bunch of freaking narcs! Ugh. I mean, they are for sure narcs. <laughs> um, just like... Um, everyone give me a perception check. Okay, and this one you can assist each other on this. Nat 20 and the 43 see this. Even the Nat 20 is like actually not a, a, typically is enough. The book gives you a DC 36 check to notice this. You see an eye is speeding towards the Naga at this point. You have a standard action to intervene. So Phineas and Galatas, or Phil Phineas and Valoros specifically can have a standard action intervene as his eye uh, is trying to get to uh, the Naga. You guys know that if it's if the Naga locks a uh, vision with the eye, like that worm that walks did, it's going to wipe its memories before it can tell you anything else. Uh, use lightning arc. All right. Um, it's a reflex save, right? Yeah, DC 23, because I'm up here. Um, I fails. Roll damage on that. Uh, 50. Alright, you... Boom, lightning crackles and you shoot the eye out of the sky. Um, he looks over as it, like, bursts into nothingness and he's just like, Oh, thank you. Thank you so much. There are benefits to serving us. That was one of the eyes of Hamul Kai. 
Kiranzar. Chapter of Norgorber's Servants. Where can we find him at? Ooh. Dropping an exciting random monster encounter here. Uh, we'll get to that in a second. Um, where can we find where can we find uh, Hamil Kai? Yeah. Um, he's like, yeah. Uh, and he basically Sorry, he gives instructions which are on a different page. Um, he starts giving you very reliable instructions to his base. He's like, I don't know much more of their plans. However, I know the way back to the base. The rest of them kind of know I'm a coward, and they didn't really trust me with much more than that. Um, all right, so Do you know at all? Um, if, uh... The information he gives you uh, gives you guys a lot of bonus. It's kind of abstracted, you know, too much to actually say, but it gives you a lot of bonuses to sneak into this base. Nice. Uh, I have one uh, more so question. Like the easiest entrance to get in is the waterway. Uh, and he like describes how you can like take a small boat, go down the waterway, and you'll be pretty quickly able to find um, this hideout. And sorry, what were you saying, boys? Uh, I have one more question. I'm pretty sure you won't be able to answer it, but have have you? Do you know if a a uh, what what are the like? They're not axiomites, but the the other one, Inevitable. the one that told there is Inevitable. Yeah, yeah. The kind of ones are like living constructs. Do you know if any inevitables have been taken to your base recently? Yes, a tall one in insane armor with a full helmet. Thank you very much. Uh, sounds very. He describes a bit more, but very clearly. Uh, Taldaris, the first emperor. Thank you very much. I will be there to serve when you call. <laughs> and he's like slithers away. All right. So <laughs> it has been a hot minute since chat retrieved. Retrie redeemed one of the random monster encounters. Um, that gives me an excuse. I wasn't even going to get a chance to use the random encounter table that comes with this book, but we are going to now. I'm going to roll the monster, and then we will come back and do it after a break, because we're pretty much at our first break point right here. All right. Um, before I do that, sorry, before I do that, though, XP. Yes. Um, you guys did get XP for take Just make putting him on your side still counts as defeating him. So, Clacosic Venaga. He's actually a slime Venaga, fun fact. Cool. Um, fiendish, Frogginus, that's a bit higher. Oh, I, I, I'm, uh, I'm guessing yes, 8, but... 8,800 XP? Cool. 8,800? 8,800. And I'm going okay. to roll on the Book 5 or for the Crown Encounter table. Uh, I, I have a question, I'm pretty sure. Yes, um, have we had 48 hours uh, in six days for me to read my, my tome of uh, Leadership and Influence? Um, well, it should be, because so, we took... This is so perfect. Yes, you did have plenty of time to read it. I'd say you can get that done. Cool, wonderful. <laughs> this, it, this just works really well with like the stuff I was spitballing earlier. Um, in a flash of hellfire, uh, these guys leave, and you see this boy appear. I oh, know, it's Mr. Cheney. He's Dick like, Cheney. You, you fucked up the ca- you're fucking up the campaign of the candidate I want. She has prime trade deals with hell. Oh, and you guys see a horned devil appear. My horns are cooler than your horns. That's bullshit, and you know it. <laughs> um, alright. Um, we will fight the horn devil when we come back. Uh, those watching, we're gonna do a quick ad break. Uh, we're gonna. Does anyone need longer than five? We're we gonna just take five. Uh, That's good for me. Ten. I I, I could use ten this time. Use ten. Okay. Uh, we're gonna do a ten minute break. We'll be back after that. Uh, stick around for a quick ad, and we'll be back in ten. All right.
right. See you guys.
<laughs> but uh, one of them was a swashbuckler for the pirate game. It was uh, they killed a lot of shit. Killed a lot oh, yeah. of shit. All right, so we are back. Um, random counter. This thing came back from hell. It's pissed you're fucking with this candidate. <laughs> um, so fuck. Let's just roll right back into initiative. New initiative. Might I be Blaze? No, I might. What the fuck? <laughs> Galatis, you can go first if you want to. Jesus. Okay. Well, you know what? Are you going to try one of your uh, end the encounter spells? Sure, why not? I'll try it. All right, so you can go first. <laughs> cool. God damn it. I already said that was 33.5. <laughs> Hold on. Um, so Galatis is 33. Blaze is 33.5. Cool. Alrighty. Alright. One spell. One spell. One, one spell. spell. One spell. <laughs> Alright, I am going to do a persistent spell polymorph. What the fuck is persistent? Is that even real meta magic? I uh, <laughs> yes, it is. As, so, as far as you know, yes. Uh, whenever a creature targeted by a persistent spell or within its area succeeds on a saving throw for against the spell, it must take, make another saving throw against the effect and take that roll. If a creature uh, if a creature fails this say a second saving throw, it suffers the full effects of the spell as if it had failed the first. So it's like it has to roll with disadvantage. Basically. Yes. Yep. That's wild. okay. So persistent bail full poly. Correct. Okay. First thing I'm gonna have you do spell resist. Mm-hmm. So cast level. Spell resist. All right. Let's see, my uh, spell resistance is. Uh, it's that plus. That is a net one. Cool. Ooh. It like spins its chain in front of it and like it absorbs the sparks of your magic. Nice try, little horn. <laughs> <laughs> little horn? I'm going to quicken spell do that again. Can you quicken something that oh uh, what level is Baleful Polymorph? It's level five. I mean it's up to level seven because of persistent and I have a meta magic rod. So, uh, cash level do that, in, doing that again. All right, that is a 32. It does get through. All right, so he needs to make a save. What kind of save? It is first a fortitude, then a will. Okay. First fortitude roll. That's not a d20. That's a d12. <laughs> yeah, use that one. <laughs> um, its first one is a 37. Roll again. Um, its next one is a 38. Damn. Ooh. Okay. It a and a 20 on that. <laughs> so, yeah, it, it surpasses that. Um... Stop doing I that. am my turn. I'm gonna try it again! Galatis. Uh, In a bit. <laughs> <laughs> Alright, so, still have Battle Mind Link up. Um, so. once you guys get, uh, adjacent- hold on, it's not like Honest There we go. It was like off kilter. Uh, once you guys get adjacent to it, um, give me a will save. This is a fear effect. Oh. You guys get a plus four to that. Because of the overtrans plate that, uh, Seraph is wearing. Nice. Um, that's a pass. Uh, 29 passes and one for dollars. He's not nearly as good. That's gonna be a fail. Um, he is frightened for two rounds. So, uh, he wants to take no actions, but... Okay. Devils do be scary sometimes. Yeah. Alright, so... He would run with the rest of his movement? Um, yes. It's not going to provoke because right. the guy hasn't gone. So he'd probably like, move one here and then move back. 
Oh no, he he's got uh, momentum. He's gonna keep going. Okay, keep going through there. <clears throat> uh, you can still make your your. Oh, you you cast battle mark, right? No, that was already on from oh, the last battle. Okay. So uh, you can still make your attack. Yep. And he hasn't gone yet, so I can do flat footed. Yep, he's flat, uh, flat footed AC. Um, twenty seven is exactly his flat footed AC, so that confirms. All right, I get another panache back. Is your what is it's plus two, right? Sorry. Your what's your weapon at right now? Oh, what Bane makes plus four with Bane. So yeah, that, that's gonna get through any DR he has. So fifty three, and then plus three for lawful. Plus four lawful, so minus three. All right, uh, that was a hefty chunk. As you just stab Excellent. into him, the Bane kind of like spreads through his chest. He's like. It's kind of golden veins start sp spreading across his red body. He's like, ugh, what? That sword! Yeah, I like fighting something that's diametrically opposed. <laughs> You're dead. Um, Caden Kalen says otherwise. Uh, he's gonna start swinging his, like, crazy-looking, diametrically opposed foes. Um, swinging his spiked, unholy spiked chain at you. <laughs> All right, so the uh, attempt to so parry. It's gonna be, it's gonna be, he gets okay. Using the chain doesn't get all his natural attacks. He gets three swings on the chain and one tail attack. So. So we'll attempt to parry the first one. All right. Um. That does not parry the first chain. No. Sadly. All right. Um. Hold on. Give me one sec. So, uh, first of all, right off the bat, um, you're going to take 21 damage. Oh, that was low for him. Um, and then, do you want to try to parry his, uh, his second one? Yep. Okay, go for the next one. Um, 31 is not going to parry that one. Yeah, I do better when Valros is here flanking. Yeah, <laughs> fair. Um, okay. This time it's going to be 26. And Ouch. he still has his, uh, his next. He's yeah, I am out of chain. panache. You're out of panache? Okay. Um, final chain um, is going to miss on a nat 1. Yeah. Ooh, although also, um, sorry, you got, you did get hit by the chain, so give me a four to two save. You're fine. Um, bite is gonna be, what's your AC right now, 30? Or sorry, tail, yeah. not bite, tails. Um, he got a 27, so that you duck the tails, it swings over you. You can see as the tail, like, swings by, um, all of the spikes on the tail are, like, serrated for, like, making you bleed. Um, that's his full turn, though. So that is okay. Sven and daughter and other doll. No, yeah. just all possible. Um, can I get... I'm gonna spend a um, point from my reservoir okay. to up the DC of my uh, spells. Okay. And I get a will save from the demon, please. Or the um, devil. Give me a... Does this spell allow spell resistance? Um... Most do. There's always some. Yes. It does? Okay. Um, yeah. Give me a cast or whatever. Uh, yep. Uh, it's just barely gonna do it. So that is gonna get through. Uh, you said will save? Yes. Um, that's gonna be a... 22? That's a fail. Oh, okay. What spell is it? Go off. Phantasmal Killer. Oh. Okay. So he believes that... Um, he's like... He looks off in, like, the middle distance. His eyes on focus. He's like, no! It's... The Horsemen of the Apocalypse from Abaddon! They've come for me! Um... It's a fortitude save next right? Yes. A 
27? Yep. Okay. I think he still takes damage, though. Yes, he does. He's like, he like looks like he's like his arms up, fending off attacks, and he takes like this like psychosomatic damage. And he sees the horseman like trampling towards him. Yeah. Yep. Is he also telepathic at all? Is he telepathic at all? Let me double check. Um, he is telepathic actually. He's range up to 100 feet. Uh, well with that. So he can now send it back at me. He's gonna turn telepathic phantasmal killer to you? Yep. <laughs> I never knew that. Yeah, if the subject <laughs> of uh, Phantasma Killer uh, succeeds in disbelieving and possesses te uh, telepathy or wearing a helm of telepathy, the beast can be turned upon you. That's wild. Why does the spell <laughs> have so many layers? Um, I guess make a will save on your own spell. Please don't kill yourself with your own spell. <laughs> That'd be hilarious. Um, <laughs> yeah. Okay. Stressed out. Um. One. Plus twelve. Oh my god. <laughs> Little doll man, we hardly knew ye. Oh, yeah. <laughs> And, uh, fortitude now. <laughs> it's my fortitude. That's... Okay. <laughs> okay, I have a question for Rhea. God damn it. <laughs> <laughs> well, I have never Sunday. seen that happen before. That's, I've really never seen that happen in years of Pathfinder. Well, you see the Horsemen of Abaddon appear, the Horsemen of Death, Pestilence, all war, all that, and they just trample you in doll form, and the doll just, like, goes limper than it was. Yeah. Um, and... Blaze, what's your question? Is, uh, is the doll a construct or undead? Construct. Construct. Cool. Cool. <laughs> okay. What do you ask? Nothing. Okay. Okay, well, first thing that happens, um... Okay, continue on. I have to look up something for the other doll, because something may happen here. Okay, we're going to look up the other Well, no, because I'm dead now. So the other doll might go crazy. <laughs> what? Yeah. <laughs> Master's dead. Oh god, here we go. What's gonna happen on the random encounter? <laughs> Big shout out to whoever gave us this random encounter. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> uh, oh boy. Um. Anyways, continue on with this. I'll look up if my if he goes crazy or not. Okay. Okay. Fair enough. <laughs> I just remembered the username. It was Machiavelli. Come on, come on, man. <laughs> Oh my lord. Well, if somebody's gonna screw this over, I'm glad it's a former party member. <laughs> That's... I didn't even type incredible right because my glasses are off. Oh my god. Um, okay. Well, while you look up the crazy doll, Phineas. <laughs> yeah. You guys have done some serious damage to this devil, by the way. He, he's not looking good. Uh, so I go into snake style, I take a five foot step and I appear over here next to him, 
Oh, that is a death attack, yeah. And uh, I'm going to try Calcific Touch. Okay. Uh, Does a 22 beat his... Uh, the 24 is what you mean. And I can't remember. It does... No, inspiration can't be used on this. All right, so that doesn't work. Can you use two for it? I know there's some extra stuff in inspiration, like investigators, where you can like spend two to do something. No, I don't think so. Okay. I think it's just on attack and saving throws. Uh, we'll still roll the attack. I mean, you can still punch. Uh, four is not. But it is back to Blaze and Sarah. Alrighty. So, uh, Galatis, you've uh, you've taken some damage, right? And uh, is where Valros is where Valros like is currently, or has you ran further away just like off screen? Am I, am I muted? Sorry, I, I'm just. I was looking up lore about access. To Sorry, the, I was muted. Uh, right. Valros is another twenty feet down the road. Okay, let me measure. Twenty. Okay. So Seraph is going to walk thirty feet and then going to teleport another. How many feet? I for. Like, just a couple more feet, all right? Like, 50, the, no, 60, there we go. Okay. Uh, and is going to cast Break Enchantment on Valoros, so his fear effect goes away. Hell yeah. All right, Valoros. Nice. So Valoros is 20 feet farther than that? Yep. Okay. Fair enough. And then Blaze is gonna, is gonna do this again. <laughs> Baleful polymorph persistent. <laughs> okay. Um, so first is castle level check. Yeah. Uh, so do, do, do. that is yep. a twenty-eight. That hits it. Move that twenty-four. <gasps> Oops, sorry, hiccups. Um. All oh, right. So it's a sorry. Will save first, right? Or fortitude first? Fortitude. Fortitude first. Okay. Um, okay, hold on. Um, 28. Woohoo! All right! Now make a will save. Wow, not one. <laughs> All right. These, this horned devil is turned into a completely plain and utterly useless snail. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> All right. The horde devil is now a sail, and we are out of combat. Hooray! Um, everyone's gonna nice place. Some mad XP for that. He should, you know, he he had his chances. He made some saves. That was a lot of saves. Why did I just? I'm so dumb. I can't do that. Though it was at the cost of most of my seventh level solo spells. It's okay. We're going back into the last persona phase. After this, so you can do okay, cool. Um, nineteen thousand two hundred XP to everybody. As the little snail takes its place. Sorry, I didn't catch that number. Nineteen thousand two hundred. Whoa! All right. Level and fifteen. And that will put us up to level fifteen. Hell yeah! Fucking dang. <laughs> All right. It um, is time for the snail Mageddon to happen. I don't know if uh. Jeff, I sent you a message about your construct. That's a possibility. If you're I, I don't think you can retrieve my soul now. I'll have to look at Axis. Ax so basically, Axis has like these con special construct forges. They work with souls. So I'd have to like. Well, I'm pretty sure because it's how the. Um, I'm already technically dead. So. In the doll. Like, I have to die in order to become a soulbound doll. But once you die, wouldn't your soul just go back to the river of souls? 
Um, no, because the creation of a Soldon doll, I have to from I actually have to take the soul from the from the river. So it's tech I've already cheated cheated death once. So it goes into this weird who gets my soul now? Can I call dibs? <laughs> Hold on. Let me, let me... I'm not sure how that works. Well, this is, this is in 2E, I guess. I mean, according to the lore that they've put out, like, just lore-wise, apparently a soul-bound doll, the creation, I guess this is from one of the novels, it, like, fragments your soul. Okay, I right, guess like... in one of the novels, a full resurrection could bring you back. Apparently. Like there's the spell resurrection? Yeah. I'm, I'm trying oh, okay, to... that's I'm literally like deep in like the wiki right now. <laughs> Soulbound dolls are sentient constructs imbued with a fragment from a living or recently living creature soul upon the creation. Um this is your full soul going into it. Yeah. Ecology. I think if you used a full resurrection, you might be able to come back as your body. Stripping a soul fragment from the dead does not prevent the rest of the soul from continuing on to the afterlife, nor does it prevent the body from later being resurrected or raised from the dead. Right, but this is a full soul, not a yeah, not the a soul. soul not a fragment. So I guess the question would be, does a full soul return to the river? I mean, just knowing Phrasma, I feel like it would, right? Like... She sends out fucking bounty hunters when souls don't come back. Right, so... I mean, but I did die in a cool way, so I'm gonna leave it at that. Alright, up, up <laughs> to you. I'll, I'll, my ruling would be, if you want to bring him back, you could. Um, because I feel like Phrasma would want to take a soul back, but if not... I mean, that was a cool way to die, so I'm gonna leave it at that one for this Fair character. Enough. That wasn't epic as fuck. That might be one of the most epic deaths I've ever seen. That was an insane counter. Um, and you've left Galatas quite confused. <laughs> thanks, Machiavelli. Thanks, Oglethorpe. Oglethorpe did a random item <laughs> Sorry, Jessica, about your doll. <laughs> you know what? I feel, like, I feel like you deserve this, Jeff, for Sven's death. You want to do the random item roll? Sure. Um, what do you think? Just Wondrous? Uh, you want to put some items, some armors? What do you want to do? We'll go Wondrous. Okay. Give me a D12 and a D100. Oh, you guys are level 15 round now, right? Yep. Oh, that might put you up to the next table on some of these. G12. That's 11. That's a risk slot. And that is going to put you up to the next highest uh, tier for risk slots. So this is, this is going to be worth a pretty penny that this devil dropped. Um, let's see, wrist slot is going down here now. Um, those are, it was 71. Uh, those are bracers of armor plus six. Oh, wow. Worth a pretty penny. Also, Oglethorpe said they did the work, now they get a snail sized prize. Alright, pause this devil. Alright. Um. So, you guys got a ton of XP there. You got some important intel also about uh, Dusk Fathom. Um, but there is, we're still going back into the final day of the thingy, Bob, the election. One second to change this back. And just for the sake of you still getting a turn in the election. Uh, Jeff, if you want to, like, have your, like, daughter 
Like you can make the roll for your genius roll for this because okay. one, one, one round left. There's no point yeah. in not having you. Um, okay, hold on. I took a picture because I knew we'd be on for a while. I didn't want to forget. Um, top of the order, that is going to be Blaze. Um, this is the final day, or it's not final day, the final like week of this election. What is cool? Yeah. Um, apart from the Norgorborite attack on you guys, there shouldn't be any other penalties towards you. All right. But from your scrying, you currently know you're scrying. You didn't know the number, but you knew that. Um, the Medusa's top three right now are Sacrifice, Sagacity, and Subterfuge. Cool, yo. <laughs> so, not, not to be uh, that guy, but because I am that guy, um, Phantasmal Killer only gets reflected back at you if they succeed at disbelieving. Didn't he fail the disbelief check and succeed on the fortitude roll? Is that what it is? I just yeah. didn't believe you. Wait, hold on. It is, if he succeeds specifically in disbelieving. Oh, I misread that then. Shit. Oh. oh. Well, 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 that sucks. Now I still haven't seen that happen. <laughs> <laughs> but it was still a cool moment. Um, was, uh, I mean, up to you. If you want to get it back on technicality, that's up to you. Yeah, we, it was already called, so. Okay. Didn't want to force you into it one way or the other, but yeah. Fair enough. I mean... On the books, that's an epic as hell. Yes. Um, sorry, Blaze, what were you saying? So, uh, I would like to, um, is like, uh, slander or whatever the, the thing is called. Uh, smear. 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 Hell yeah. Uh, I would like to smear their sagacity, uh, because, like, t taking money from an anonymous source for your campaign ain't very smart. Fair enough. Uh, go ahead and make your roll with your agents. Okay. Now. Um, do you want to gather, or do you want to spend any money to gather people for the smear check? Eh, sure. I'll, I'll uh, get 200 gold. Okay, so I so get... get an extra plus two on this. 14. Up to, was that with the plus two? Uh, yeah. Uh, that's, that's not a success. Okay. She remains, she keeps her, her, her points for now. Alright, uh, next up. Whoops, closed my photos by accident. Uh, next up, uh, Sven, as your daughter, you can still make your turn. Yep, um, we'll try to pull. Alright. Um, what are you trying to, what are you, what, you're trying to do genius? Yeah. Uh, that's the, uh, your genius, I mean, largely thanks to some of you guys' work here and your work, Sven, the genius is too high for that to succeed. Okay. Um, cause you got, your genius is at five right now, right, Phineas? That's correct. That's, uh, so that's pretty high. Alright, uh, next up is Galatus. Alright, <clears throat> Phineas, what do you want me to go for? Sagacity or sacrifice? Go for uh, sagacity. Okay, so we're going to stump. We'll use mage's decree. Trying for sagacity. Total of sixteen. Yeah, are you trying to? Were you trying to stump? You said. Yeah. Uh, what's your sagacity right now, Phineas? Uh, five. Yeah, too high. The sixteen's not going to do it. Yeah. But, I mean, that's. I mean, it's good. You guys are already very high in a lot of these categories. Um. Last but not least for this election, Phineas. This campaign will not be intimidated by otherworldly beings sent to assassinate this candidate. <laughs> I can't believe that my opponent had the audacity to send a <laughs> demon going. frog, a devil, and a naga to kill me. That's against... Uh, Th th that's smearing her s smearing, sagacity. Smearing sagacity. Okay, sagacity goes down by two. And then I'll um, smear her her subterfuge, um, basically saying, you know, she's not able to handle any aspect of this campaign, including her underhanded attempts. Okay. Uh, 
go for that one. Subterfuge. Goes down by two as well. Um, this is her final turn as the election comes to a close. Desperately tries to get in some more voters. She is going to try and up subterfuge one last time. Okay. All right. It is time to tally the votes. We'll go into the voting centers. They go to their polling centers, you know, cast their ballots for one of you. Um, let's go down the list here. What is your charm right now, Phineas? Uh, one. One. What is your um, generosity? That's not a thing. Or what is it? What is it? <laughs> what is Sacrifice? It? Just say like seven. Ten. Ten, Ben. <laughs> generosity is a ten. Genius. Genius, right. Genius. I don't know why it's a generosity. What is your genius? Five. Okay. Five. Um, heroism? Uh, one. One. Uh, sacrifice? Five. Sagacity? Five. Oh, gosh. Okay, so uh, subterfuge? Four. Okay. Um... You beat her on five out of six. <clears throat> um, and as such, you have the requisite votes that Phineas is now the new counselor of Gates within this district. Excellent work. Everyone golf claps. Yay, yay very good. <laughs> um, all right. Now, mechanically, that does so, give you some... So, I'm thinking, Phineas, um, how about wrought iron? That would be pretty cool, right? Yeah. Um, you know, maybe with some gemstones encrusted on it, make something really fancy. Um, well, well, I mean, they do you can make something the... very fancy as a symbol of your office. Um, well, I'm just saying, you know, you should make all the gates look nice. They hand you the Rod of Gates. It functions as a however you suzerain scepter. Suzerain scepter. Does all this good stuff. Oh yeah, I just remembered. Uh, Blaze sprouts wings from her back. <laughs> Draconic <laughs> wings. Okay. Oh, at level 15. <laughs> Yeah. I thought you just meant like enjoy that you guys won the election. I was like, okay, what a place. <laughs> um, so you get this rod. Uh, additionally, um, oh, okay, okay. So it functions like this with an exception, uh, except that in place of granting additional benefits to a PC who has the leadership feat, uh, it grants the wielder a plus two on all operation checks. As your agents are just like, fuck, he won an office in a plane he doesn't even live in. No, he's moving in, right? Uh, he's, Somehow. He's, he has moved in. he's got some property. You guys did get him some property. Okay. Um, everybody for winning is going to get a massive story award. Everyone gets 51,200 XP. Very substantial. All right. So you guys all have that level 15 now. Um, you guys have done a solid amount of the clues already. Um... So you guys have, I mean, you guys have, you guys know some shit's going down in Dusk, uh, Dusk Fathoms now. Um, there are a few leads you guys never explored. Um, two of the biggest ones being, um, talking to that astrologer, uh, as well as figuring out what the fuck is up with Undead being in Access, a place where Undead shouldn't exist. And the one we've already planned to go do, which is the cockatoos. And the, yeah. and, and, uh, yeah, the 
hive mind cockatiel swarm. Yes. All right. And let me double check. But are, are, do, you guys, do you guys have any items that aren't fully triumphed right now? I don't. I believe so. Ignore me! Alright. Um, if that is the case, do you have a lightning elemental? I believe I do. I think I used it in the. Alright, cool. Window. Sure do, this bad boy. This is the cannon image from Pathfinder. Cool. They do. Oh, I think I saw. Yeah, it was actually in one of the games we were streaming. I think it was in like ruins or something. I knew they looked familiar. All right. So. Well, I would like to check out the astrologer. Okay. Uh, what do you guys want to do next, though? Cockatoo. <laughs> yeah, those cockatoos are, uh... They're asking for it. They really are. All right. <laughs> Let's go there. I need to I need to use this ability. I just got a cool new spell. Uh, <laughs> all right. So, uh, you guys can make a knowledge... Or, sorry, uh, either a knowledge local or a diplomacy check to try to suss out where these people are. And while they're doing this, uh, Jeff, let me know if you need any help with character stuff as well. Yep, we'll do. Um, okay. So, believe it or not, this is not the only pack of animals that lives here. Due to their ingenuity, resourcefulness, and gregariousness, monkeys have long served as Abadar's sacred animal. And a lot of troops of primates live throughout the Eternal City. In fact, a troop of resolute flame rough tamarins called the Order of Eves has long laid claim to Saishto's Sa roofs as their territory, both due to their posturing bravado and the leadership of the venerable Lord Squire Sape, an awakened tamarin monkey and cleric of Avatar. Lord. Uh, despite the monkeys' occasional acts of mischief, the locals uh, typically respect them, leave out small offerings and stuff. However, a new rival threatens to ruin everything. A raucous swarm of resolute cockatiels, currently known as the Crown Top Coup, have recently migrated to Sayashto. And even in the course of a month, they've caused a mess by raiding Yashtimo seeds left out to the fire, cawing triumphantly just at all hours, and defecating on anyone who critiques them. <laughs> you know what? I'm going to start doing that too. I can fly. What a move. Um, <laughs> we can all fly. <laughs> another nat. You guys had so many nat 20s in session. Um, Valoros and Caltus, you hear that the lead cockatoo has some sort of magic ring as a crown. <laughs> they describe it as a gold band with the head of a lion, and there's a ruby in the lion's jaw. Go ahead and give me a knowledge history check. Or knowledge nobility. Anyone who, and anyone, if you describe it to the group, they can make it to it. Alright, the, 30, the 35 will do it. Um, Alright. This is a ring that was once worn by First Emperor Taldaris. It is known as the Band of Triumph. It's a white gold ring bearing the relief image of a roaring lion. Once per day on command, you can point the ring and mentally designate one or more creatures in a 60-foot cone as enemies, after which the ring roars triumphantly. All the targets are affected by shout with a DC fortitude save of 20. 
Uh, all other objects in the area are unharmed, and all other creatures in the area receive the benefits of the Inspire Courage Bardic Performance, as if you're performed by a 7th level bard for 3 rounds. Mm, fun! Um, when activating the ring, uh, if you are a bard, you can expend a use of Bardic Performance uh, to have your own bard level calculated. Got it, got it, got it. Uh, in addition, it gives you a plus 4 enhancement to Charisma bonus. Um, so you guys find out that they are, the leader is wearing that. Um, you would know also that this is a hive mind. And most hive minds link to like a central thing. Probably whatever bird is wearing the ring is like the center of this hive mind. <coughs> um, so you guys can either like, do you guys want to talk to the monkeys? You guys can just seek out the crown top coup. Whatever you like. Let's go talk to the monkeys. Okay. okay. <laughs> Give me a sec. Um, I don't believe he has official arts, but I am going to check. Okay, he does not. Uh, but you guys do see a tamarind flame, a flame roughed tamarind monkey and his cohort sunning themselves uh, on the roofs uh, of one of the neighboring districts. Area three over here. Who, who, who are you? Uh, what's the leader's name again? Uh, Lord Squire Sape, like uh, like Sapien, but without the end. Lord Squire Sape, we have come to offer our assistance in the matter of the devilish cockatiels. They take our spot. Unacceptable. Abadar does not allow. Totally unacceptable. We could attack, or we could, if you would be willing to hold, negotiate a parlay on our behalf. Would you prefer to parlay, or would you prefer to have them destroyed? I would prefer a chance at parlay. Alright, well we will attempt to parlay on your behalf. <laughs> Anything else you can tell us that will help us out in dealing with them? The flock has powers. When you're near them, you have to tell the truth. Ah. Uh, they have a constant zone of truth spell around the flock. <laughs> <laughs> Alright. Well, this should be fun. I'm surprised they haven't tore themselves apart. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Um, okay, so you guys go search. It's pretty fucking easy as you hear the raucous call of a, like, <laughs> huge-sized swarm of cockatiels. Um, just gonna drop them on the map. In reference to your tokens, the swarm is probably about yay big. Um, and I'll just, uh, pass out the art as well so you can see. <laughs> Why are you here? Give us gifts! My cockatiels. Oh, we have any good gifts? We got a ton of crap. Um, also, uh, anyone near them make the will save for Zone of Truth. I'll your fanny ass and then you just ignore it. <laughs> uh, the DC is 18, it looks like. Yeah, 18. Okay, so both Blaze and Galaxy are fine. Sarah's fine. Alaros on a nat 20 is also fine. <laughs> Let's see. What's some good crap we got that they would like as a gift? Huh. We've got um, three uh, necklace of fireball beads left. I would like them to have those. I, I'm, I'm not a fan of giving the cockatoos fireball. <laughs> Absolutely not. I, I do not approve. So it's a 2 3d6 and 1 5d6. We don't specialize in evocations. We specialize in psychic magics. 
just a gift. I mean, they're very nice looking, I assume. <laughs> they are very a nice. necklace of... Give me a diplomacy check, see if we'll accept a fireball uh, beads. They are, they are, oh. uh, they are effectively, just so you guys know, 10th level. The swarm is a 10th level psychic caster. <laughs> <laughs> That's ridiculous. It's so good. It's level spells. <laughs> or like, All right, so we... like, hmm. we will accept this gift of red baubles. They're like also <laughs> like every time they talk, it's just like a bunch of them speaking at once. <laughs> uh, one of the, one of the many like flies down, like picks it up in its beak and kind of just like they like. It can't wear it because it's too big, but it, like, has a bunch of its friends all line up in a row, so the necklace is over, like, five cockatiel necks. Um, that'll give you a bonus on your diplomacy stuff here. It, it, it ups their attitude a bit. Um, like... You gave gift! Now tell the Crown Town Coup, what do you want? The, uh... Tamarin monkeys wish to parlay with you. They object to the crapping and the stealing. They can object all they want to our excrement, but excrement <laughs> there will be. Uh, give me, give me a diplomacy check. <laughs> yeah, right, hang on, just a second, I get it. Right. And let's see, diplomacy. Um, you're gonna I can I can roll point. twice. Hang on, there we go. Oh my god! <laughs> At twenty, uh, you need one more success after this. So basically, it's like, hmm. You have given us much to consider. We are wise in the ways of psychic arts. In fact, even now we read your minds and know you are good people. But we are not wise in the ways of the divine, as is Lord Squire Sape. What would you have us do? Have us just leave? Have you meet with them? Perhaps there's a way that um, both groups can share the space together. All right, give me one more diplomacy check. I'm gonna roll that one again too. convinced us like starts gathering the flock we will meet with the monkeys I can't help but admire your uh, crown is there anything you would trade that for if our parlay goes well and you end this how long has it been time's really hard I don't I can't read clocks it feels like century-long war between us and the Tamarins. You guys know it's been like two weeks. <laughs> yeah, the time on these uh, outer planes gets to me, too. Indeed. It is very confusing. <laughs> um, so you guys... They, they fly back with you guys. You hold a parlay. There's like 20 monkeys plus Sir Sape. We're just like, ooh, 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 ooh. Uh, as they see the birds approaching. Uh, what do you say to calm them down? <laughs> we have invited them to parlay as you asked. Please, everyone, be peaceable. We'll listen. We will. We'll listen. These mortals convince us. They tried to convince us to leave your territory. Do we have your word that you will first proclaim us as equals to the Order of the Eves, your monkey tribe? Seriously, that's what they want. <laughs> um, the monkeys all start muttering. Give me a diplomacy check on uh, Sir Safe and them. 
Uh, all right. <laughs> no. Dang, I cannot roll well. All right, what? Re <laughs> Hang on, <laughs> wrong roll. Steps in as well. <laughs> There we go. Alright. We... We agree. Let there be peace between bird... Between cockatiel and tamarin. Huzzah! Sound the beaks of celebration! <laughs> <laughs> Look, it's like... Ooh, ooh, ooh. And they're like... In honor of your service to us, the Crown Top Coup, we bestow this gift. One of them, like, pulls the crown off the other one, tosses you guys the ring. Um, and as they toss the ring, this, this is a real, I want everyone to know this is a real option in the book I'm about to say. It's not me adding this in. Sir Sape. You, we saw your networks of operatives during election. You may take yeah. up yes. to 20 of my monkey subjects to serve as operatives. Yes. You go. Live wow. with all this. It is incredibly generous. <laughs> you, guys, you guys can distribute 20 monkey servants amongst yourselves. <laughs> so I guess five each. <laughs> I'm taking my five, hundred percent. I I need these monkey. Oh, Jesus Christ! <laughs> I God, I accept this gift. Um. Okay. So you settled their dispute peaceably. Um, which is one of the paths here. Okay. All right. Now that we've done that, do we want to blow up the flock? Hold on. Cast lightning arc on two corners of the flock. Are you actually doing that? Because then I had to recalculate this XP. <laughs> no. <laughs> no. Um, everyone gets 19,200. I saw one or two. Wild. Um, okay. So, I think what will be perfect here. So, let's do the, we can do the astrologer lead. Astrologist. Starboy. Starboy. Uh, uh, lead, and then we can do. It'll be about time for a break. Anyway, we can do a ten-minute break, and I, I can you and you know give you some more time to work on any character ideas you might have, Jeff. Yep. Um. All right. So Ben, just to know the future, how long before they set off the uh, fireballs inside the flock? <laughs> is there gonna be a, like another combat this session i really want to use this new spell um maybe. <laughs> all right uh, join the stream and drop a random encounter actually i think <laughs> i have enough points to do that <laughs> you can't drop points on your own game <laughs> oh, <I'm back. laughs> um all right Hold if on. Ben knows about it, I mean, he doesn't know our screen names for Twitch. <laughs> well, he probably knows mine. It's the same as my Discord name. <laughs> okay. Well, that's a failure of imagination, sir. Um, cool, 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 cool. I got, like, two brain cells. I don't want to confuse them. Did recommend you guys talk to a local astronomer 
about the strange constellation you guys saw in that vision. Uh, recommends Nabal, who is a scholar uh, that she believed to live somewhere in uh, Sayishto. Um, so go ahead and give me a knowledge local check as you try to track him down. Knowledge local, right? Assisting each other up over 25. Um, you hear... Um, that, ironically, Nabal um, is a doll. <laughs> he is a male advanced soulbound doll. <laughs> are you are you fucking with me right now? Hundred percent not fucking with me. And you have to tell me if you're fucking with me. I'm, <laughs> oh. I'm so serious. I will show you in a second. <laughs> this is they don't have real art for him, but this is the handout that comes with Nabil. It is the default handout for soulbound dolls in Pathfinder. Yep. <laughs> Oh. oh, fuck. If that's what your character looked like, Jeff, I would have killed it. <laughs> yeah, honestly, your character looked way better than that. <laughs> Fucking terrifying. Um, but with those checks, you also find out that Nabal the doll uh, has been actually hanging around a place you guys were there recently, the Grand Rotunda, where you guys had that festival kind of during your political machinations. All right. Well, let's head there, then. <laughs> Um, you guys see he's kind of just, you end up finding him kind of walking the gardens nearby. Um, and as the dog, you guys can go up and talk to him whenever you want. He appears to be, um, he is a like small wooden doll. Uh, you see he's got like a little monocle on and he's got like a little leather bag with him. Excuse us? Are you the astronomer? I was before I was a doll. I still try to study the stars. Who are you? You you should know Phineas, the uh, new counselor, uh, counselor of, Gates. of Gates. A pleasure. I voted for you in the election. Thank you very much. And I'll shake his hand. It's like a really tiny hand, like the size of like a Lego piece. <laughs> <laughs> um, and so we. We were wondering if you could help us out. We saw a strange constellation in a vision. You saw a con- Please, describe it to me. Mm. Well, we can actually have somebody draw it for you. <coughs> Alright, uh, Yes, let me scoop that out for you. Go ahead and give me a sketch. Over 20, yeah, for sure. Interesting. You know, several months ago, I noticed a disruption in the Lion Knight. It's a minor astral constellation, invisible to the naked eye. Farther study suggested its constituent lights were vanishing. And he's like, it appears to be the same constellation you saw, though. <clears throat> well, what what would that mean? It's hard to say, but it would appear that those stars are dying out. I don't know if you've heard of this, but I've heard that the stars are just like our own sun, when they have their own planets around them. Would that mean entire potential civilizations are vanishing? Hmm. I don't know. The thing is, all of that universe, the planets you're talking about, on the material plane, the material plane encompasses that whole plane of existence, not just Galarian. Mm -hmm. There are other worlds. But... I admit, I have never explored the stars of the Plane of Law. 
They likely are the same stars seen between various outer planes. But as to whether they host life around them, I couldn't say. We are trying to locate the first emperor, Taldaris. Would this constellation have any relation to that quest? First emperor, Taldaris. It's, yes. I recall the Lion Knight is representative of him. But, hold on. <laughs> he looks at the constellation again through telescopes like, those stars are modulating between our plane and the astral plane. It's as if someone is taking them. And as with mm -hmm. anything, true immortality comes from those who still speak your name. If aspects of his legend, like his constellation, begin to fade, so too will Taldaris. So, once you become immortal, you still have to work at it, huh? Keep your name out there. Hopefully people know your story. This is very high-level planar cosmology, so I'm not positive, but... My theory has always been that that was the case. I mean, there are countless deities, whether they were true gods or powerful demigods, I, I can't say, but there are long-lost gods on Galarian from Mwangi. There are gods of the Aslanti peoples who are gone. These gods, do they still exist? No one worships them. But... Are gods not immortal? I cannot say. Well, Gala just looks at the rest of the group, kind of confused, see if any of them have anything to ask or add. Since we're on the plane of Axis, is there any requirement to believe in something like the stars to keep them stable well I don't know about that but if you got here perhaps you could just shift to the astral plane if the moats are out there you could rearrange the constellation well that does sound like something fun to do Galatus is tempted to put his name in lights. I don't think that would help us, though. <laughs> Fair enough. <laughs> um, could help Taldaris. Up, up to you guys. That's the information. He, that's all the information he really has. Oh, that's interesting. I mean, we do have a lead on where Taldaris is. I wonder what the stars have to do with I mean if we'd want to do anything with those before trying to free him. Hmm. Thoughts? I want to get off this plane as soon as possible. I, I just want to find him and get back. I can't disagree with you there. I mean, there's lots of different path, like branching paths in this book, so like, it's not everything's necessary. Just out of character. All right. So, I mean, if we're worried about Taldor, then we should probably help Taldaris. Yeah. Okay. So fixing so, it to do that. We'll let the uh, undead issue here go and see about getting to the dust plane. I mean, if if we if we solve that, I have plane shift. We can always come back here. Fair enough. 
So, to the dust plane for Calderas. Are we going to the astral plane to look for the stars, or are we going to Dusk Fathom, Norgober's demi plane? Well, that's what I'm asking. I kind of lean towards the demi plane, but if somebody really wants to do the astral thing first, that's fine. Yeah, I'm good with either. What does Phineas wish? I think if we can empower Taldaris. He can help us more when we break him free. Yeah, I, mean, I, I hear it. that may be true. Yeah. But I do so want to get this over with and back home. I miss my princess. Sounds like the motive, the general vibe then is to go straight for him. No, we're going to do astral. It sounds like. Astral? Okay. Let's just be prudent. Hey, hey, Ben, guess what feed I'm taking? Okay. Leadership. Okay. <laughs> oh, what perk are you going to get? What, what's your cohort? I'm not sure, because we're using it to represent my cult. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> I see. Just, uh, you know, a powerful fanatic, you know? Oracles are pretty cool. You can drop yourselves here. So basically, you find yourselves. Uh, I assume you're playing ship and not plays, right? Yeah. Okay. So you find yourselves on the astral plane, kind of a, a weird reflection of the regular plane that you're on right now, Axis. The astral plane kind of weaves between all the different planes, both in the inner and outer sphere of this cosmos. What's weird about the stars here, the stars in question, is as you look up, you realize that the stars have kind of drifted away. They're not dead. But the stars are really just motes of light. These are kind of like abstract stars the gods put here. Like they're not actual balls of gas that have like incredible, you know, reactions going on. However, give me a perception check as you guys kind of make your way towards these like motes of light. Can I use acute senses before I do? Um, yes. Oh yeah, by the way, uh, I'm, I'm getting my minute and an hour buffs on. Yeah, same here. Um, uh, you are not, uh, you, you do see this thing before it attacks. Um, but you see this creature. Hold on. You see this creature approaching you guys on kind of these floating platforms in the sky. Ooh, he's cool. Um, if you guys want, you can make a knowledge planes check on him. It looks like Silverhawks got venomized. Kind of, yeah. It looks like a Jabberwock. All right. Um, I'm sorry, knowledge planes? Oh, yeah, D6. 26 for me. You guys working together. Right. Oh, that D6 there. Okay, now, now we're talking. Now. 28. All right. This is not a demon or a devil. It is a daemon from the plane of Abaddon. Specifically, it is an Astra daemon. They are believed to be direct creations of the four horsemen of the apocalypse. They live out their existence in search of souls to harvest and wipe from existence. Uh, basically, they are like ravening interplanar predators, oh, openly hunting throughout the void for souls in which to feed. These voracious creatures are the personifications of death resulting from negative energy or level drain. So basically, if you died from one of those effects, there's a chance you become an astrodane in the next life. <laughs> their very touch drains life force from their enemies, and even perishing near them sates their thirst for life and souls. Cool. All right, roll for initiative. He did not get a drop on you at all. Oh, actually, hold on. Let me clear our initiative first because we were on that other map. There you go. Now you can roll. Astro Damon. Oh, crash. Will he commit? A 
Uh, have we slept since uh, the fight oh, you with? You guys have slept. You leveled up. No, no worries. Okay. Cool, yo. Also, do you want any like temp person to play as, Jeff? I feel bad that you're just like watching Master Damon. No, it's it's fine. I'm okay. working on character right now. Okay. So. All right. Uh, Blaze, you're up first. All right. So, um, Blaze is going to reach a hand into the sky and smash it downward as a lightning strike uh, appears over the Astrodamon's head. But this is no mere lightning strike because it turns into a greater lightning in elemental upon impact. What the fuck? <laughs> this greater is the lightning elemental? elemental? Yep, greater lightning elemental. It is a huge size, so that's three by three. Elemental. Huge size. Yeah. And uh, because he's slamming down, he gets an attack of opportunity. Oh. Um, so that is a... And, and I'm guessing there's no metal on this guy, right? No, no. He's okay. made of, like, fucking, like, the abyss between the stars. Okay. Does a 33 hit him? Um, a 33 will hit him, yes. Cool, yo. So, upon impact, he takes 37 damage. Is this but my level... It is half lightning, half bludgeoning. Okay, we'll just divide that in two then. So, 37, like... 18 of its lightning. Some of that's gonna be reduced, basically. Alright. And he takes some damage as well because he just falls on his ass. And that is Blazes and his turn. And then Seraph will uh, just, just move away because they don't want to be a part of this. <laughs> okay. Uh, that is the Astro Demon. It kind of like looks at the Lightning Elemental and is just like, fuck that. That thing doesn't have a soul that I can eat. <laughs> uh, Not tech. I mean, like, come on. He is just going to look at Galatis. Who looks yummy. And point it towards him. Um, and in... Uh, Bring it, big guy. You just hear in your mind... Die. Uh, give me a fortitude save. We'll decline. Alright. That is good that you made that save. Uh, sorry, give me one sec. Add that. You're gonna take 33 damage. Um, if you had From? failed, you would have taken 170 damage. Yeah, um, if I get a reduced effect on a successful save, then no effect. Oh, do you it's have, like um, the uh, what's it called? Fuck the one that's like evasion, but everything. Yep. Fucking no, God. fortitude. Oh, for specifically for fortitude. Yep. Uh, okay, then yeah. <laughs> uh, <clears throat> I mock his feeble efforts to acquaint me with death. So though that was his. If anyone wants to make a spell craft check, but out of character, pretty obvious spell. This out there. Because yeah, of the it's finger and the death thing? It's finger and death. <laughs> yeah. The dead finger. The yucky finger. He kind of just, like, narrows his eyes. I will say, um... Uh... Sorry, the lightning elemental when he hit him. Uh, can you give him a D100 on a high he'll hit? Because he is under the constant effects of displacement. Because he's made of the void. Oh, that's cool. Alright, uh, D100, right? Yeah. Astro Demons are fucking wild. <laughs> that's okay. a 97. All that happened as, it, as, as normal. Uh, okay, so it tried to do Finger of Death. Um, it doesn't have any Swifts that are relevant right now. Um, it is, however... 
um, going to move closer to you. It's going to fly over here, or kind of hover. It kind of hovers over this way, and then over this way. Uh, but it does it get an up? Yeah. Cool. Basically, he maneuvers so he doesn't provoke from the rest of y'all, but provokes the lightning elemental. All right. Um, Me too. Not a hit, even with the... Uh, yeah, not a hit. Uh, Galatus. I mean, he rolled a two. I didn't. I didn't think it would hit. <laughs> Fair enough. Um, basically, um, as he gets close to you guys, it's not act. It doesn't actually have a mechanical effect yet. Um, but you can feel like a pull on your very being, as if your soul is being like sucked towards his body. You think if you die here, there's no afterlife for you. You will just be in his body forever. Mm, dumb. I throw the doll in. <laughs> <laughs> Jesus Christ. <laughs> uh, Alright, uh, Galatas then. Okay, so... Uh, Galatas is going to five foot step over there. And Valoros is going to pop around there. Oh, actually... Where was he here? Yeah, he might as well. He's got to move anyway. Where was he? Okay. He was over here. Okay, so... Op attack. Um, who moved first? He, do, he doesn't have... Oh, he does have combat reflexes. He's just going to op attack both of you. Galatus was just a five foot. Oh, you're just five foot? Okay, just Valoros then. Um, yep. Valor he's going to try to hit Valoros with a bite attack. That is a 38. I'll hit. Oh, by the way, could I give a full art for this guy? Uh, yeah, give me one sec. Um, Ram. So first of all, you just take... He takes 12 damage. Um, and... You, he takes one negative, or sorry, give me a fortitude save, because it's gonna, potentially going to give you a negative level. Okay, resist the negative level, but what is your grab, or what is your, he's going to try to grab you. What's your CMD for Valorous? 33. Okay, he grabs you. Um, you see his jaws begin to stretch, like, the size of Valoros's body. Uh, you can start to see an afterimage of Valoros. Um, there's a chance next turn that unless he gets out of the grapple, he is just going to suck the soul out of Valoros. Well, that's no fun. Yeah, they're, uh, they, they, they scary boys. <laughs> uh, this is the full art of an Astro Demon. Cool. They're absolutely wild. Um, yeah. But uh, you guys both still get your attacks, so go ahead. So, uh, Valoros is going to challenge him. Roger that. Um, and he's, he's going to do. Yeah. 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 <laughs> For sure. Alright. Sorry, go ahead. And he's going to do the one attack. Okay. So I'm not going to confirm that is a hit. Um, I'm going to say, since he's literally holding you, I feel like this placement wouldn't matter. Seems fair. Because you could just literally <laughs> just stab the arm that is holding you. So he, he, he does take that damage. Okay. And then Galatus is going to get his full attack. Okay. And I think... I don't think Valor. If you get the crit, I don't think you can off attack with Valor. But okay, go ahead and make your make your roll. I will. I will investigate. Okay. Um, that is a confirmed crit on the f sorry uh, on the on the first one there. Give me a D one hundred. A high is a hit, low is a miss. And the 30 is also potential hit. It's another D100. Mm -hmm. Come on! Um, but you did have a confirmed crit, even though it was a miss there. 
So, Defender of the Grapple. Oh uh, yeah, he cannot make attacks opportunity. Ooh, shout out to the grapple chart. All right, Phineas. So I take a five foot step and I appear over here. Okay. And I'm going to punch him with a calcific touch. Okay, it's gonna get through spell resistance, then give me a displacement mischance, so D100. So I have ghost touch, does that matter? Let me double check displacement, because I actually think it might. Um, ghost touch doesn't matter now. Uh, do you have true seeing though? Who is true seeing? I, I can turn on true seeing. Um, I think you would know with your spellcraft that uh, if you have true seeing, you would be able to see through displacement. Uh, but I feel like Phineas would have known that. You wanted to activate that instead of Calcific Touch? Um, yeah, I guess so. Yeah, I, I would say you would have, Phineas would have, would have known that. That is not a very level magic. It's like a level 2 spell. Um, so, Phineas, you can see perfectly where he is now. Uh, Blaze. Okay. He still, I got he still has Valoros. He gonna try to suck Valoros' soul. With how he's grappling him, could a combat maneuver of disarm get him out of there? I would say yes. Cool. Second question, how tall is this guy, and how wide is his, like, head right now? How wide is his head? Yeah, like, like, what's, um, what's the circumference? Circumference of his head? I don't know, a couple feet, <laughs> How big is a normal uh, head? We'll say two and a half feet. Okay. <laughs> I wasn't ready for this one. Um, in terms and of, in terms of height, Aster Damons are about... Like 13, 14 feet tall. Okay. So. This is going to sound a little wild, and that's because it is. Okay. I'm intrigued. Blaze is going to fly up. Going to uh, take off uh, her, her current, uh, her uh, current, like, metal necklace, right? Going to throw it onto the Astrodamon, right? You're going to try to put the and necklace on the Astrodamon? Yes, just, like, make it contact his skin. And, like, stay there for a bit. Alright, I'm listening. Continue. And I'll then I'm going, to have my, and I'm going to have my lightning elemental charge over and use the disarm um, combat maneuver with spark leap because uh, in, because me if metal mastery applies, aka something that has metal on it, I get a plus 10 to my CMBs. I see where you're going. That's <laughs> an insane interaction. I'm going to say straight dex roll to get that metal on him. All right. Straight dex. So I feel like there's um, going to be a roll involved. For something like just, that. just to improve that, I'm going to have Seraph touch of luck me. Okay. Fair enough. So straight dex number one. That's five. Straight dex number two. Twenty. Uh, I was thinking DC 20, so that, that gets it on there. Whoa! Alright. Alright, so that gives your elemental the plus well, 10. Over. Uh, move him, move him over. Oh, sorry, yeah, I probably didn't have control of him. There you go. I mean, he doesn't even need to be that close. He's fucking huge size, so he doesn't even need to be there. Okay, yoink, and that will be at a... Yikes, that's a high plus to CMP. important because he's going to take a standard action to do the devour soul ability next turn yep i doubt this will miss though 45 
Um, honestly, that was close. That almost failed. Oh. They, <laughs> they do not like letting go of living prey. <laughs> However, you do disarm it as the lightning arcs through the necklace, shocking this creature. Uh, and the elemental kind of just, like, punches it in, like, the side of the forearm. Uh, Valoros drops to the ground. Yay! Yay! Oh. And that's all my actions. That was... <laughs> nice mover. Wild. Holy shit. Okay. Um... Alright. He gonna... Um... Let me, double, let me double check how this how this ability functions. I don't think there's a save because it functions similar to a spell. Start dying. Uh, it's going to point a finger at Valoros, angry that its prey escaped. Uh, it hits you with the effect of an enervation. There is no save. You take three negative levels. What, what? A uh, permanent or temporary? Uh, enervation gives temp. Oh, cool. spell level is enervation. For him, he's it's level four. I will sacrifice a level four spell to try and uh, dispel it. This is a spell-like ability, so they, they can be countered. It's only, I think, supernaturals that can. So yeah, this, you can definitely try to counter this. Don't think... Isn't it like 4 plus the... Or 15 plus the spell level? Uh, let me see right quick. I should really just have dispel magic rules up in every game ever, honestly. Um, DC is 11 plus the, the caster, the plus the, the spells level, plus the spells level, okay. So, a 15 would have done it. Yeah, so that just, that you counter the enervation. It's like, beam of black energy leaps out of its hand, and Phineas, like, gestures uh, the gish for, like, on his shoulder, and a swirl of magic intercepts the beam and disables it. Whoa. Dang. Um, holy fuck. <laughs> All right, fuck me. That's his turn. He should have just full right. Little did he know that there was counter spells at work. Uh, Galatus and Valoros, who's now free. Yeah. Galatalaros. Galatalaros. Okay. So, um, is Valoros on his feet? Um, I'm gonna say the guy's 13 feet. I'm gonna give me a reflex it. Uh, DC 15. If he hits it, he can stay up. He's up. So that means the two of them together will full attack. Hell yeah, go for it. And all of these are plus two on what they say, so. Plus two on what they say? Okay. Um, yeah. Hit, potential crit. Or sorry, potential hit, potential crit, potential hit. So three D100s, highs or hits. So the bottom two miss, but that 41 for 36 damage does connect. Okay. And then Galatus. Potential hit, potential crit. Um, see what happens with the hundreds. Yes. Both get through. Nice. Okay, so... Um, Aster Damons are, uh, not lawful, but that's, that's going to be 48 on the first one, and the crit is 64. Uh, the Aster Damon, you see it start to flicker out of existence. Like, it, its body is falling apart at the seams. And then that prompts another attack of opportunity. Okay, go for the swing. Oh, yeah. I have a question. Does displacement, um, like, does blind fly, uh, blind fight uh, the uh, counteract displacement? Because it's like a sight effect. I believe so. Yes. Oh, cool. Okay. 
because uh, yeah, yeah, basically it's like an illusion that like he's both here and like two feet away in this direction. All right. Seventy-eight hits, or sorry, it gets through. So the thirty-six gets for thirty-three, and the astrodamon lets out a shriek and spins up into like a singularity, like a little black hole for a second. You feel your souls getting pulled, and then vanishes. All right, uh, but he's just going to yoink her uh, necklace off the ground because it is important. <laughs> um, everyone, that was, that was a CR sixteen creature. So you get some XP here. Whoa. Uh, everyone gets 19,200. Um, just so you guys know, if Valdos had been in his hand still, um, Devour Soul, if you uh, fail the Fortitude save, uh, it just consumes the soul and instantly kills you. Ouch. Those are nasty. Yeah. Thank you, Blaze, very, very much. <laughs> yeah. It was, uh, it was a wild thing to do, and uh, I'm glad. scary that. monster. <laughs> you know, you uh, might see if you, you can figure out some sort of, you know, automatic land some metal on something. I'm I'm going to try to figure out because there's a spell for literally everything. There's got to be a spell for me to put metal on something. Yeah. <laughs> I feel like I think there's an alchemical item that coats someone in metal dust. Ooh, cool. Can't yeah, there if is. That was a homebrew thing my DM did, or like I remember I had an alchemist that used to like make that. No, no, it's an actual Pathfinder thing. Yeah. Okay, cool. There you go. That might be worth cool. investing in a few of those. Sounds good. Um. Okay. So you guys are easily able to rearrange the stars now, and actually, as you do. Sorry. Go back up. Hey, Ben. Did we get any impression like this thing was guarding this location, or just wandered through, or... I mean, um, I don't know if there's any way like to tell. Guarding, it looks like it was getting in the way of these stars, which are no longer moving, but are still, mm -hmm. like, not in the right spot. Um... You mm. see the stars are drifting here, and... As you guys rearrange them, when you touch them, you see things. And what you see is Stella, Illumia, and Megilla, the hag coven that you guys defeated. It seems like they were taking these and putting them in their heart stones to create heart stones for themselves. And you can like see like visions of like one like, and one final emperor for courage and awe, the risen king. Uh, and they were, like, taking them both to fuck with Taldaris and to, like, empower themselves. But once you guys killed them, the stars returned. Uh, the Astrodamon just didn't know. It was just still guarding them. All right. Was it very difficult to put them back? Uh, no. Weirdly, since, like, it's kind of like a weird scale illusion, if that makes sense. Like, now that you're in this astral plane, they're, like, the size of, like, a golf ball. Mm -hmm. So it's like you put them back in, and then once you're back on the material plane looking through a telescope, it's like, oh, they're way in the distance in Axis. Alright, and will they stay put? I mean, do we need to glue them to something? No, they should. They basically, like, as soon as you let them go, they, like, lock into that, like, spatial coordinate. Okay. And I uh, to uh, say goodbye to Jim because he only disappears after, like, seven, uh, like, 30 seconds. So, like vanishes in a crackle of lightning. <laughs> so are there any stars nearby that don't belong to somebody I'm afraid of? Um, <laughs> or trying to help currently? Give me, give me a perception check or a sense motive check. Sense motive on the stars. There are loose, planar, astral stars here. I want to take one with Mage Hand. Okay. <laughs> of course, that doesn't work on magic items. I don't. These are so far obscured. Like, I don't even know if this counts as a magic item. It's just a <laughs> thing that exists in the planes. <laughs> uh, you scoop one up into a little fucking jar. You got a star in a jar. <laughs> um. As you guys plane shift back, 
uh, Nabil the doll is still there, and she's like looking through a telescope, and he's like, Huh, they're, they're back. That's wild. You moved them? Honestly, I was like 50% sure that astral plane nonsense was me just bullshitting. <laughs> well, that's kind of what we figured too. There was an astrodemon there. Those things are nasty. <laughs> <laughs> is that like like a quasar or like some kind of star formation no focus on the daemon part <laughs> oh oh it's literally like a daemon yeah <laughs> concerning I'm glad it's dead yeah Okay, so what happened to Phineas's star when he brought it back? Um, it didn't expand into a massive it just expands star. It into a full-size star. The gravity, <laughs> just, just, axis. The gravity <laughs> just starts pulling axes apart. No, it's, it's just like a miniature like star. Like it, it's not it's not as hot as a star. It doesn't have the mass of a star. It looks like a star that's. Maybe not as far away as, you know, if you're looking up in the night sky, but, like, you know, light years enough away that it's the size of a golf ball. <laughs> Believe it or not, I think the gods put them in place more as, like, decoration or sometimes in conjunction with powerful souls like Taldaris. I don't think the gods have access to <laughs> Let's give each one the mass and power of a real star. <laughs> God forbid anyone shifts the astral plane here. It'll be <laughs> fucked. Oh my god. I Never mind. That's a spoiler for a different case. I just thought of something that would be insane if that mass thing was true, but it's not relevant. Um, Alright, well... Here's our option. We have, you've done all the things, basically, to go to Dusk Fathom. Um, do we want to just stop? like a half hour early to make sure that Jeff has the time to finish a, a proper character. Yeah, and I was going to do that or if the undead is combat, maybe we could run that one, but we don't have to skip over stuff to go do it. I mean, just... I don't necessarily want to skip. Okay. Not okay if we end early. I guess that, that's a pretty good ending point. Once you get into Dusk, uh, Dusk Fathom, it's going to be pretty rough. Like, and, and, like, pretty... It's gonna be pretty fast-paced. Lots of stabbing? Lot, lots of stab. This is, like, the big stab. Is this the in-game? Okay, I have a question. Oh, no, there's another book, isn't there? There's still another book, yeah. Okay. I, I will say Dusk Hathom... Dusk Hathom... Dusk Fathom. Not Dusk Hathom. Have at him. Uh, Dusk Fathom is the last part of Book 5. Like, once you guys beat Dusk Fathom, you're in the last book. Okay. So, just as a the six query. Six, I think is what it's called. Yeah, go ahead. How, how important was the election to this book? Um, well, it gives you a lot of XP, but uh, if you guys don't stop her, um, they're able... I can go more into it once you guys defeat the like Norgorb rights here, but basically they they put a, they start putting a lot of shit into effect. Yeah. Okay. Basically, like, once she's in power, they kind of fully take over her, and uh, shit keeps escalating. In the long run, it it, it is more a long run thing. Like it, it it would affect some stuff immediately, but. This is basically like an extended plot. Like, you know, like the, the other council, the uh, Counselor of Graves told you guys, like you, a lot of mm -hmm. things need majority or unanimous votes. This is like step one for Norgorber and his followers to like corrupt access. Well, good thing we uh, got Phineas in there instead. He can corrupt the access in a totally different way. And on, like, a, a greater planar sense, like, canonically in Pathfinder, like, these outer planes are, like, ideas made reality. So, mm -hmm. like, Norgorber's cult, like, if they did this, there's a chance that it could, the corruption would just, like, 
destabilize Axis as a whole. Because the idea of Axis is like lawful, you know, all this shit going like a, a fair election. If they had like run a corrupt election and put someone in a position of power, that would have like reverberated through Axis. All right. Very much like a like a war of ideology. As far as a uh, game goes next week, are we um, are we playing without Galatis? Or are we uh, skipping? Um, I feel like we're we're so far in. I, I might we might just skip the week. That's fine with me. I mean, yeah, Galatis like is our big DPS, so not having him would be bad. That's what I was gonna say. Like, that's a lot of DPS <laughs> to be missing, and this is like not even like. I mean, they can always make up for it in like a uh, shit ton of time. Yeah, I mean, I think. I mean, realistically, you guys might be able to do Dusk Fathom in like a session. So we take a week off, then one more week, and then you're in book six, it's final hall. Cool. All right. Well, all right. that's all for now. I'm excited to see what you come up with, Jeff. Yeah. That was definitely like the most insane death I've ever DM'd by far. Um. Right. Thank you everyone for watching. I'm gonna one run one last. Episode, and, uh, we'll see you all not next Monday, but the Monday after. Have a good night. Good night, everyone.